Yeah, we here. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light. Yeah, I get a moment of your time. Smoke a little, uh, yeah. life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light. A group on the 50. Love my whole city. I want to welcome everybody to Hood Stocks. This is number three. Today's date. What's the date? I usually write this shit down. Let me get the, let me get my shit first. together again. Today is the first. Today is June first, twenty nineteen, five oh nine p.m. This is a fuck Saturday, man. This is how we spending our Saturday, man. We're gonna spend our Saturday right. We got a special guest, a really special guest, man. This dude is fucking legendary. I want to introduce you all to the founder of the Brown Berets, Doctor. David Sanchez. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> take a bow. Take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> hey, thank you for uh, coming on the show, man. Appreciate it. How you feeling? I'm great, man. Just to get the word out. How many podcasts have you done? Oh, not many. Okay. So is this uh, is it safe to say this might be number one? I think so. Hey, man. So you're getting your virginity. You're losing your virginity, your podcast virginity. <laughs> well, the future's catching up, you know, all the new technology. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah, 100%, man. You know what I mean? And just because, uh, you know, we might be getting older or whatever, we, we, need to, we need to keep up, keep up with the times, you know? And, uh, you know, it's all about the technology, man. Gotta, yeah. gotta love the technology, you know? That's right. Who would have thought? Did you see this coming? No. No? Back in the day, man, when you were fucking grinding it out, marching them streets, fucking, you know, fighting for injustice and everything like that, man, you know? <laughs> you know, the uh, back then, uh, it was word of mouth, right? Yeah, and flyers, a lot of flyers. A lot of flyers, huh? Now you, you don't even have to get out of bed. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, but still it's a difficult, you know, uh, it's a difficult task, you know, that people need to be united. Uh, just as they were united in, in past years. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. I mean, it's, I would say it's probably a little harder to unite people uh, these days, being the fact that, uh, ah, man, they're just uh, closed minded, short attention span. Um, you probably have like a lot of, uh, back in your day, man, you guys were fucking, you know, putting in the fucking the groundwork, you know, you're fucking. Letting letting the feet hit the concrete type of shit, right? And and nowadays, uh, you know, you got you know Instagram fucking activist. Yeah, it's it's a little different. Uh, um, there was a, a psychological war going on just to get the rasa back on the right road. Uh, they were off the road, you know. Everybody was want, wanted to be white, so we had to get them back on the on the on the right road. Yeah. And once again, we we have that dilemma, you know. Everybody, you know. Assimilation versus uh, Chicano culture. People want to assimilate, you know. The assimilationists are the ones that are holding us back because they want to be white. Damn. Well, let's talk about that shit, man. How well, how did this all begin, man? What what got you into this? You know, what year did this start? Well, so you know, it started a long time ago. I mean, actually, uh, I guess uh, when I was twelve years old, I got I got beat up by a gang pretty bad, you know. And uh, I says, hey, this is. You know, I thought America was going to be like Disneyland for me, you know, at 12 years old. But then I got hit with reality. Yeah. And uh, I said, and I wasn't even in the game at the time. And so uh, uh, I had to, later on, I had to join a, a, a Vario for protection. But uh, before that, when I was 12, it was bad. You know, uh, I got beat up by, by, by a gang. And then when I was 13, I got beat up by a gang from Mexico. And then when I was 14, I got beat up by a white gang. I got beat up by the LAPD. Ah. And I was a victim every time. Yeah, no, 100%, man. LAPD, biggest gang out there, right? Yeah. I mean, out here on these streets, for sure. Yeah. It goes on, you know, and still, and we have to, we brought justice to the streets. You know, they, they stopped harassing us. They started respecting us. But once again, because the movement kind of slowed down, they're back, the police are back on our backs again. Damn. So you are the founder of the Brown Berets. Yes. It all began, uh, actually, I started organizing when I was uh, 13. We uh, we wanted to stop the voters from fighting the west side and the east side, uh, you know, uh, some of the voters that were fighting out there. 
And we wanted to bring peace between the barrios, between 18th Street, between Flats, and between uh, uh, Clanton, Westside Clanton. So, so we had a dance, you know, and so we, you know, so we could bring everybody together. Everybody would come to the dance because they want to see the girls, right? Hell yeah! You know, Shit. so that brought some peace in the neighborhood. So that was my first organizing experience. Yeah, man, that must have been that must have felt good. That was some shit right there, huh? Yeah, stop the violence. Stop the violence, man. Just bring a fucking some good music, some drinks. Some there you go. Some beautiful looking girls. Yeah. Just dance it off. It's something common, you know. We have something in common, you know. No, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, that makes sense. You know, who's gonna turn that down? Yeah, you know, we're gonna stop the violence for one night just to get their little boogie on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, peace. Then tomorrow's another day. <laughs> well, even though you know the, the violence is, is something that brown braids have always fought against. You know, uh, I tell you, even today, you know, a lot of people say, "Hey, you're, you know, you're a PhD, you're a college professor. You know, what are you doing? You know, back in the trenches? You know." And I'm saying, you know, well, there's nobody left to to carry the banner. There's nobody left to go out there and organize. And because of that, I mean, you know, Gorgon Gonzalez died, and Cesar Chavez died, and Reyes Tirina died. All the old leaders died, and I'm the only one left. You know, so it's up. You know, no one else is left to, you know, to carry the front. You know, so, or create yeah. a front. Yeah. And so that's that's what we're doing now. We're trying to create a, a front. You're trying to create the front. So right now, you're trying to recruit brown berets, and uh, just so. You guys, they can carry on uh, the tradition of uh, uniting uh, the neighborhoods, uh, standing up for the people that uh, can't stand for themselves, and um, basically just a group of guys uh, out there for the raza to do the right thing. Uh, I like you said the way you said that. You know, tradition is real important. And we do have a tradition of carnalismo, a brotherhood that comes from the movement. Yeah. And back in the days, uh, the raza was super united. And uh, they were united because, you know, they had a common cause of, of equal opportunity, jobs, and, and something that they could fight for, uh, unity. And there was, there, was, there was that element there. But since then, you know, uh, it got really bad in the 1990s. I mean, it got so bad, there was like 1,200 Chicanos were getting killed every year in L.A. County. Yeah, nine, the 90s were no joke. Oh, yeah. 1,200 Chicanos every year. I mean, I was out there running yeah. the streets back then. That was a hundred a, a month. Chicago's getting killed. That shit was fucking active as fuck. It was dangerous out there on the streets, man. It was. You know, I didn't leave home without a gun. I'll tell it you that. It was bad. It yeah. was. So, uh, so I, I, you know, we already organized the Brown Braves in, in uh, '92, and uh, we went out there. And we stopped the violence, you know. And since then, uh, it's, you know, so you could say we've saved thousands of lives. You figured, not just the Southwest, uh, not just the Los Angeles, but the Southwest. We went to all the barrios in Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. And uh, you know, carrying the campaign, it was a campaign to stop the violence. Yeah, and we we stopped it. So now, you know, so so now um, Chicanos could have a, a better chance and opportunity to live live in peace. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to live in peace? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, important. I mean, it's a trick question. I mean, it all depends on who you asking and shit. But back in the day, you know, I mean, I didn't give a fuck about peace. And there's a lot of guys that live in. But now, you know, my, you know, my. Uh, just through uh, experiences and through life and surviving what I've survived, man. You know, uh, I'm all about the peace these days, man. You know, I got girls that count on me and, you know, I can't be out there in the streets fucking raising havoc, acting a fool, acting irresponsible, you know, uh, because it's just, it's not me no more. You know, there's other people that count on me. So I, I, I can a hundred percent agree with what you're saying and, well, it's important to, you know, I think one of the one of the things that I knew how to do very well was to to speak. When I was in high school, I took speech classes. Yeah. And to write. I think that's a quality of most leaders need. They need those qualities. They need to know how to write, speak, but they also have to know the Chicano history. Because a lot of people that come out, oh, I'm a Chicano leader, and they don't even know the history. Yeah. And a lot of people from Mexico, they don't even know the history either. You know, so history is our foundation. History is our culture. Right. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, fortunately we got you for that, man. You oh know? yeah. Well, they take it you away. <laughs> edu edu educate us all on the history, you know, Chicano education. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I get that, man. And that's the foundation without a foundation. What the fuck you standing on? Really? That's, right. That's true. Yeah. With that, you know, you got a roots of the foundation and if you don't know your roots and you know, uh, what you're actually standing on then, man, it's, 
There's madness out there, yeah. yeah. And insanity. You know, not, a lot of people go insane because they don't know who they are. That's why, you know, Chicano identity is real important to help. Actually, Chicano studies is good for the mental health, you know. Uh, Chicano history, Chicano culture is good for the mental health and because it, it gives the people an identity, a foundation to stand on. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many times I lost my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. So I, I fucking... I, can, I ain't got enough fingers in my hand to count how many times I lost my fucking mind. But fortunately, when I lost it, you know, I had the GPS on it, you know, and I got it back. Yeah, that's great. That's so, great. I mean, some people lose their mind and they don't ever get it back. That's true. They, you they, know. Yeah, well, you have, you have to be real careful about that. You know, some people, some, about losing your mind. Oh, well, let me tell you about it. Let me tell you what. You're going into danger. You're, you're putting yourself in danger when you accept the idea that you're going crazy. Oh. You know, once you get into that zone... You might never come back. Yeah, and that's that's the problem, you know. With a lot of the last hour, or they go, or they take the white identity and they want to be white locals, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, dye their hair blonde and who knows what else. <laughs> you know, so there's a whole thing there, and I always say that you know the Chicago code is first of all never put yourself down. Yeah, because that's what the psychiatrists want you to do: put yourself down. Yeah, so they could. So yeah. you can sign you up, get your medical card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Talk to me. Yeah. Tell so. me what the fuck's wrong with you. you know? <laughs> yeah. I got all day. <laughs> I got all day. Yeah, just bring your medical card. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a cold shot. Oh, yeah. It's they're making shot. money off of us. And the prisoners, too, they're all making money off us. Psych meds. Yeah. Psych meds. They're making, they're making blue cool bucks, the doctors. And I mean, they made money, they've made money off of me, I'll tell you that. Really? You know, yeah, I, I fucking, I, I've dealt with... Uh, you know, um, you know, I'm I'm not scared, and I'm I'm open to uh, talk about my uh, mental health, and uh, I've struggled with it over the years, and didn't help at times when I was, uh, you know, I was already unhealthy mentally, and then I was uh, putting drugs on top of it, and that's those are the times I was talking about when I was losing my fucking mind. Oh yeah, you know. But anyways, uh, you know, I, I've I've seen a psychiatrist, man, and um, you know, just try to like actually, this is actually uh, real recent, you know, just to kind of like. Let me tap into this. I always felt like I was too good or or not too good, but um I've always felt that uh like I didn't need that. And maybe I didn't need that, but you know, uh as I grow my family, I'm always trying to find a way to improve myself because what's good for me is good for the people around me. So if I'm good in my head, then everybody's gonna be good around me, you know. So this time around I kind of explored different things, you know. And uh, but I hear what you're saying though, you know what I mean? Like they want to make money off you. They want to say, hey, you know, tell me everything that's fucking wrong with you, and let me prescribe you about fucking a hundred uh, different fucking pills and shit. Let's get you on that, and then bam, the government's fucking counting their fucking hundreds, and and we're fucking, you know, what I mean, counting our fucking pills. You know what I mean? I get it. <laughs> I mean, I get yeah, it. Well, yeah, they're making money. That's they're making money, but this right here, yeah, I think this is the real medicine right here. It probably is. This is the real is. medicine right yeah, here. It probably is. You know? Yeah, it's it's just too much that you know. That, all the people that are going insane out there, you know, like I got a friend in the, in the, in the, in the mental uh, hospital, you know, once you get in the mental hospital, they don't have to let you out. No, they don't. <laughs> I mean, once, once you get in the mental hospital, man, you're always going to be labeled a fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, 5150 or, you know, whatever the fucking label is for that. You know what I mean? Uh, fortunately for me, I've never made it to the mental hospital, but uh, there's times where I felt like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I hear you. That's you know, what, but that's what the that's what this society does. This it's, is a competitive, high pressure white society that push you to the wall. I mean, just just for example, those red light tickets. Tell me, you don't go crazy when you get a red light camera on you. You know. You know what? I don't think those are legit anymore. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I heard, and every well, ever since. You know, I'm not out there fucking running every red light I fucking can. But, you know, sometimes when you're like, ah, I got that yellow, I'm going to make that yellow. And then as soon as you hit that fucking crosswalk, it fucking bam, hits red. And then all of a sudden you hear the pop pop, you see the flash and you're like, fuck, yeah. I'm got. But uh, I think, uh, I don't know, I don't know how good the information is that I've, I I got from that. But I heard that they're, they're no longer legal well, that's good. to hit you with the cameras anymore. After they made billions of dollars off the Rasa, right? Oh, man, <laughs> killing them, man. I had to take care of a couple traffic bills. Uh uh, traffic tickets uh the beginning of this year you know and um i was able to take care of them because of my fucking uh, tax refund it's, it's unfortunate that i had to spend some of my tax refund on that shit but you know it's funny because i'm sitting there in the fucking uh courtroom and they, they are just fucking they're like oh uh uh 
Don't worry about it. What we're going to do is we're going to drop it down to a fucking uh, uh, second level uh, offense or some fucking shit. Uh, $300. Pay it today and you're good. You know? Yeah. I mean, 300 bucks for you. Bro, it's, it's crazy. They're fucking making, they're killing it with that, you know? Oh, they've been doing that while well, looking at when all the rasa that goes to prison every time they make, they uh -huh. send, a, send a brother to prison or, 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 or a sister to prison. You know, they, they make uh, something like $80,000 a, a year. Yeah, they're killing it. Yeah. And then they're fucking, they're feeding motherfuckers like some fucking, uh, what do they call it? Mechanically separated fucking meat. You know, now I don't know what the fuck that is, but it says it on the box in the fucking prison chow halls and shit. And um, I've worked a couple of myself. And uh, yeah, mechanically separated meat, you yeah. know. But anyways, they're making all this fucking money and, you know, I get it. They're giving them, they're giving the inmates the bare minimal of what they have to give them and then pocketing the rest. Yeah. I mean, it's a million dollar, a billion dollar fucking, uh, uh, you know, uh, business, big business. business. Yeah, yeah, big business, man. Like, I mean, uh, in the state of California, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know what the, I don't know what the numbers are right now, but I know, uh, uh, you know, a little while back, uh, there was more prisons than colleges. Really? Yeah. There's more in California, state of California, there's more penitentiaries, state prisons, than there is colleges, community colleges, you know? It just goes to show you that, you know, the, the controls that they put on, on us, uh, on our society, on the Chicano society, on the Mexican-American society, La Raza, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, pushed into a corner many times and we, and we can't, we can't get out. And so we, we take it out on our brothers and sisters and, and, and we should, you know, we should understand that, you know, that that's what happens with a lot of people who do violence against Don Raza. They're just having a nervous breakdown you know, because of all the pressure. For example, housing. I mean, you can't even find a place to rent, not unless you got thousand dollars a month in your back pocket, you know, yeah. and then you end up find, you find, you find yourself in a situation where you're just working just to pay the rent. Yeah. You know, so it's just a lot of these things. And this is why we did the Brown Braves back in, in, in the days is because, uh, we got tired of being uh, pressured by the system. Yeah. You know, uh, pressured by the police, pressured by the schools. That's, that's another thing. The schools is another uh, a ball game that they, they use against us. And this is why it's hard uh, for, for the, the movement to get together because the schools are doing a good job brainwashing and terrorizing the children because, uh, for example, Dr. Rona Fields, she said that to take – the Chicano identity away from a child is terror. It's terrorism to take the identity away. Because once you take the identity away, that person becomes more weaker and becomes more um, subtle, acceptable to you know other mental problems. And so that's why we the, 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 the brown brain movement, I mean, was so strong, we were called uh, the leaders of the third liberation. And the reason why we were called that because we, what we did also triggered off other movements all over the country and all over the world uh, because people saw how we were standing up against the system. Other people began to stand up against the system. Now, the brown brains have a long history. Uh, you know, I, can, I don't want to bore you with all the, all the no. history, but we have a long history of creating events, marches, demonstrations, occupations. And, uh, for example, Catalina Island, that was – one of the things that the Brown Braves did, we took over Catalina Island, you know, for 30 days until they figured out how they're going to get rid of us, <laughs> you know. But we wanted that island to put up maybe a Chicago University there. I mean, what do you mean? Wait, wait, hold on. So you guys, like, held the island hostage, or what the fuck you guys do? Elaborate on that. Let's hear that. Well, if you don't mind. We were the first ones to develop the concept of occupation. And when I, the concept of occupation is, you don't just go demonstrate, you actually occupy land uh, to make a point. Yeah. Our point was that we wanted to bring attention to the problems of the Mexican American community. But we also wanted to bring a point to the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which was a treaty between the United States and Mexico, which says uh, that Chicanos have the right, uh, traditional rights. Uh, and and Chicanos have the right of passageway. Okay, well, cops pulling us over, they violate that treaty. So there was a treaty that brought peace between the United States and Mexico during the Mexican-American War. We had, there was a Mexican-American War in 1848 between the United States and Mexico. So as soon as they, 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 the United States came in, all of these Chicanos were stuck on this side of the border, 
and they became the first Mexican Americans. Right. And that was in 1848. And, to, and was, they were so scared of the Mexicans and the Mexican Americans, the United States finally came to a peace agreement and they took half of Mexico. And but they, the, the islands were not included. The uh, Channel Islands were not included. For example, Catalina Island. And we went there um, by by boat and by air, and we landed on the island. We looked for land to occupy to take over. We took over some land. We called it Campo Tecolote, uh, Project Tecolote, and we uh, we held the land for 27 days. Finally, the sheriff came, pushed us out at gunpoint, and then they changed the laws on us. We could no longer camp there, and so we had to leave. They they took us at gunpoint, and they put us on the boat, and they brought us back. And so, but anyway, nonetheless, it made the international news. Yeah. Everybody was talking about it. Hell yeah. And, <laughs> and we could have had the island. We could have today. I mean, we still have a little piece of it. Brown Bay still have a little piece of it. Uh, a lease. We still have a lease on the island, a piece of it. But what I'm trying to say is we could have had that island for the Chicanos. But what happened was uh, the FBI was causing trouble with the Brown Bay chapters. And it's a fact that Ed Edgar Hoover told the FBI informants to go out there and break up the Brown Berets. And so they broke up the Brown Berets in 72. Okay. And so we restarted again in 1992. But in 1972, the FBI activated their FBI informants. There's still some of them out there. And what they do is they cause division. They make people fight with each other. They spread rumors. And so that's why, uh, uh, you know, we have to be aware you know, not to spread rumors about the Rasa. Kind of like what Russia's been doing, right? Misinformation. Misinformation. Russia does a lot of that, man. They'll fucking, uh, they'll, uh, they'll have the different, they'll plan different rallies, man, right next to each other, knowing damn well both organizations at uh, both events, you know, are fucking enemies and shit, and they'll set that shit up. And sit back and watch that shit explode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, 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 yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, and the Nazis crazy. developed that. The Nazis is they, that right? Is that you know, a Nazi yeah. tactic? Yeah, and Nazi yeah. tactic before they took over France, they radioed rumors into France and made everybody fight with each other. So, so when the Germans came to take over France, everybody was fighting. They were weak because they were too busy fighting with each other. To just, you know, the Germans just walked in and took over France. Yeah. That was during World War Two. Uh, there's still a lot of misinformation going on today. Uh, for example, uh, you know, the Brown Berets, we walked out the schools. This was one of the things. We, it was the Brown Berets that walked out the schools in 68 during uh, school walkouts. That's what sparked the Chicago movement. But all kinds of other people came out of the woodwork taking credit. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's the way it goes. They want to claim the fame, right? Yeah. I was the there. <laughs> I was right there in the front line, you know, <laughs> claiming the fame, bro. Like they always doing that shit. Hey, check it out. We got a question right here from uh, Jennifer Jackson. She said, sure. ask him why the Brown Berets were created. Well, the Brown Berets were created to, to create uh, a message, uh, uh, a message to our own people and to give a message to the system. Yeah, for sure. So, Yava Asta were tired of being pushed around. Uh, and, and, and a message to your own Rasa. Uh, that we have a Chicano identity, let's identify with it, let's get united. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it was it was not easy. I mean, it was a hard task. I mean, we started off, what happened when I was in high school, this has been going on for a long time. When I was in high school, uh, I, I wanted to put a coffee house. You know, I, I was hang, used to hang around, as a high school student, used to hang around USC. They had a nice coffee house. All the garages used to hang out at the coffee house. Yeah. It's called a Sheshire Cat at USC. What's I used that? to go hang out there too, and even though I was a high school student, yeah. and trip out and everybody. And I said, "This is what we need in East LA is a is a coffee house. Yeah, so place we can hang out at. Yeah, we need a place to hang out. So I went. So so I I was able to when I was in high school, I was able to write a proposal to the Southern California Council of Churches, and told me East LA we need a coffee house. And so they gave me the money to rent the building. Oh yeah, shit! Yeah, and uh, so so before you know it, and that's where the brown brace started, and that's where the movement started out of the coffee house. The coffee house is called the Piranha Coffee House. Damn, that's, that's fucking that's that's cool as shit, man. Yeah, and so that's it's it started right there. A bunch of dudes started hanging out. A bunch of dudes started trading information. A bunch of dudes felt strongly about certain things that were going on in the neighborhood that they weren't happy about. Created a movement. Created a movement, but the, for the, the but the vanguard, the vanguard were the brown berets. 
That's where the Vanguard, that's where the Brown Bridge started at. See, what happened was they, they, hang, they hung on one of the vatos. Uh, Danny uh, Hernandez got hung at the East LA Sheriff's Station. Well, we had the coffee house, right? And so we were pissed off, you know. Because why, uh, did he, why did he get hung? Did he hang himself? Like They happened? said he hung himself, but he was all beat up. So how could he be, get all beat up and hung himself at the same time? Yeah, for sure. You know, and it was in, at the yeah. sheriff's station, and they were, you know, they were known for hanging people. But he, anyway, uh, it was known fact that he was hung, you know. And so uh, so everybody got pissed off, you know. I mean, they, they assassinated him. They still assassinated Rasa, you know. And so, so uh, you know, what I, what I did was I went downtown, and, and I bought myself a brown beret, you know. And a brown one, because somebody gave me a blue braid, so I bought a brown one. So I was wearing a brown one at the coffee house, and we said, "Well, let's go demonstrate." I says, "What? Well, you want one of these hats too?" He, yeah, we want one of those hats. You know, so I went and bought downtown about twelve hats, and brown braid hats, and then I went back to the coffee house and told the customers, "Let's go demonstrate." And, and whoever wanted a brown braid, just handing them out to everybody. We went to go demonstrate uh, at the sheriff's station. That's how it started. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. That's how the brown braid started. Yep. Day one. Yeah. Damn. That's dope. You were the one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, bro, you're like a fucking rock star, huh? No, I'm not a rock star, but I do play guitar. Damn. But anyway. You know what? When I see pictures, I see them old pictures that you post up sometimes and other people post up. And, and I mean, that's just what I see when I see it. I said, man, this dude's been fucking leading the march. He's been... You've been doing a lot of different things on many levels for a lot of fucking years. And I mean that to me, that just puts you on the kind of like rock star status, man. Oh, thank you. Well, it's in, it's in my it's in my blood. It's in all of our blood, you know. Uh, many of our grandparents and, and great grandparents fought in the Mexican Revolution. Many of our, our grandfathers and our uncles fought in the in, in the wars and in, in, in World War Two. There's like twenty thousand Chicanos that died in World War Two. Um, Vietnam, it was like eight thousand Chicanos died in Vietnam. In Korea, there was like. 4,000 Chicanos died in Korea. So it's in our blood, you know, to I mean, fight. Yeah. You know, no, 100%. I yeah. mean, like, you know, when we, there's probably a fucking, uh, I don't know how many boxing matches on tonight, and it's all fucking Chicanos, right? I mean, it's all Raza, you know? Yeah. You know, I get it. I mean, yeah, we love to fucking, you know, we love to fight. Courage. You know, we let, yeah, we stand. We let, When we stand for something, we stand. We stand for it. Yeah, spirit. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, it's in our it's in our spirit. It's in our soul, man. I get that. You know, um, but, uh, damn, that's, that's, that's fucking... It's awesome, man. I think I think we have a, we have a, a spiritual value, which is which is pretty important. I mean, I've been studying it, and I I I came to the conclusion that the Chicanos, our spiritual value was in our intelligence, and that our intelligence was inherited, inherited uh, memory, and also inherited culturally. If you look at the Toltecs and the Aztecs and and the Mayan, I mean, these were intelligent people. Yeah, you know, they I were, mean, they're building fucking pyramids and they're fucking. I mean, yeah, yeah, and then and then and then the white folks come out there you from Spain, and they 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 were talking bad about you know trying to put everybody down. You know, the church was talking, putting everybody down. They were you know the, the Aztecs were doing heart surgery, but but you know they were trying to say we were doing sacrifices, but it was actually heart surgery. Wow, you know, so I mean that's how the system is. The system will make you look bad, and all and over and over again they try to make the brown berets look bad. You know, especially these scholars, these these writers that. That write books about the Chicano, they be putting down their anti, they've been putting down the brown braid and they're very anti-Chicano and very anti-brown braid. And this is why one of the reasons why we don't get invited to some of the colleges and universities, because you have people writing books against us. Yeah. Hey, check it out. You have some questions right here, man. Okay. You got uh so first one, this is another one from Jennifer Jackson. It she says she's asking, did the brown braids ever organize anything with the Black Panthers? Yes, we we mostly uh, organized. Uh, well, whenever there was a funeral, we would always t attend the Black uh, Panther funerals because they were so they were going out and sacrificing, especially in 1969. I think that's 40 Black Panthers that were killed. Uh, they were they were out to, to fight the system all the way because they were getting killed more than anybody uh, by police. And, and why were they getting killed more? Because they were black, or because they were they were they were uh, they were pushing harder against the system. I mean, in comparison to the Brown Berets, are there, there was just their numbers, there was a lot more of them than the Brown Berets, like? Well, I mean, it's just, it's just a, a system of, of racism that's been going on for, for, for 100 years. Yeah, uh, so it was, was the color yeah. of their skin then. They had yeah. that off the top, before the Raza, they had a bigger target on their back. 
Yeah, I mean, even even as slaves, they they they, they were being tortured and killed, and even after after that, uh, they were tortured and killed. As a matter of fact, um, the Mexican American War began because of slavery. You know, the, the Gringos came to Texas uh, in 1836, and they brought their slaves with them. And Mexico said, "You can't bring slaves to Mexico. We, it's against the law." You <laughs> yeah, know? You we know? don't play that shit. <laughs> yeah. So they so they started a war with Mexico. And as a result, Mexico lost half its territory. Yeah, for standing up for something they believe, you know. I think you know Aldrich Cleaver. You know, I, I knew the Black Panthers pretty well. I used to party with Aldrich Cleaver and some of the other other Panthers. And uh, we, I, the reason why I used to hang out with them because I wanted to see what they were going through, so we wouldn't go through the same, go through the same problems. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I knew, I knew that it was not good for us to go out there and try to fight the police with a gun because you get killed. They're 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 military. The police are the Army, they are the military, you know, they are the occupation army that still keeps control, making sure this stays America and not go back to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the, anyway, the, it's called occupation forces. Anyway, the Black Panthers, uh, one thing I learned from them that that going out and shooting it out was not good for Brown Brace. Well, we did something a little different. We organized mass demonstrations, and in the mass demonstrations, we were able to have impact. Yeah, opposed to uh, mass demonstrations, opposed to fucking waving around a gun and fucking violence. And, you know, uh, I mean, you said that that's kind of like the the approach that Black Panthers were having. I mean, I know they were demonstrating a lot as well, but they were a little more aggressive. Yes. Yeah, they were a little more aggressive. Also. Well, they, they, you know, they got their point across. Yeah. Uh, but once again, just like the brown Brothers, the FBI came out, broke everybody up. Yeah, for sure. And that that is a that is a, a problem, and unfortunately, some of our demonstrations got a little wild. Uh, I think I think of all the demonstrations that we had, I think four people were killed, and uh, something like uh, more than fifty people were shot, hundreds wow. of people were arrested. Yeah, uh, that's because a lot of people didn't. You know, people were. You know, our community was exploding with 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 anger over the system, the way we were being treated, but also the way we were being sent to the war. What was this around the sixties? Yeah, this was in this was in the nineteen seventy when Ruben Salazar got killed. Okay, uh, no, the, there was two issues. One issue was police brutality, but the other issue was the Vietnam War. Uh, Chicanos were dying at a high percentage. Uh, where eight thousand Chicanos died in Vietnam, and a lot of our friends were dying, and so we're saying, you know, this is something wrong. We got to demonstrate against this, and our demonstrations were so effective and so large that we actually helped bring an end to the war in Vietnam, thus saving hundreds of lives, thousands of lives, because we brought an end to the war. And that was the Chicago Moratorium Committee. I was co-chair. I started the Chicago Moratorium, Moratorium Committee. I was co-chair, and that was our, our our venue to organize mass demonstrations. Yeah, wow. That's badass, and the shit was effective. Oh, yeah. It was effective. But I, re- I used to be a reader, see? I used to read about demonstrations. and You studied and, it. Oh, yeah, I study history. Yeah. I still study history. I mean, yeah, you study it, you see what was effective, what was not, and then you got the little trial and error, and you're like, all right, let's go ahead and fucking kink this a little like this, and we'll try it this way this time, this angle. Yeah. That's true. I mean, practice makes perfect, right? It doesn't always work, but it, sometimes it does. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you, you might uh, get through a, a, you know, a handful of people, and sometimes you might get it all the way across to the uh, next state or something, right? You know what I mean, you know, different levels and shit, but that's... Man, hey, you got another question right here. It says, ah, you got a couple questions. It said, uh, did the movement have anything to do with the Zoot Suit riots? A lot of people say yes, and a lot of people say no, but I say I say yes uh, because the Zoot Suiters were Chicanos. They yeah. didn't find out being Chicano. The soldiers in, in, in World War II, the Mexican-American soldiers, um, they didn't find out being Chicano. And so... In, in that particular case, it was the, the Chicano legend that passed on from there. But it even goes further back uh, to the to the, the uh, American Revolution. I mean, the Mexican Revolution of 18, uh, 1910, Mexican Revolution with Pancho Villa. Uh, that's where the word Chicano started developing, where a lot of people were escaping from the Mexican Revolution in Mexico, yeah. coming to the United States, and those were called the Chicanos. Chicano is also a word that goes back to the Aztecas. 
Uh, the Aztecas were Mexicanos. They were the Mexicano tribe. Right. The Chica. And so that's where it comes from. It actually comes from the from the root. And that is the the valley of, of Mexico. Shit. Here goes another question. Uh, what kind of changes did the Brown Berets make for Chicanos? Oh, magnificent changes. I think one of the things that was happening was there was uh, so much uh, violence in our community and drugs. Hey, uh, salute to you. <laughs> thank you. There was so much violence and drugs in our community uh, prior to the movement. Uh, it's a fact that when people start thinking about other things and other things uh, like movement, uh, the violence went down because the movement was there, the violence went down, and the drugs went down. You know? And it's because Chicanos were starting to think about other things rather than just me, 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 and, and getting stoned. They're starting to think about, hey, we're stronger as a group, and we can get ahead as a group. And thousands and thousands and thousands of Chicanos got good jobs and got uh, the schools opened up, uh, got their education uh, as a result of the Chicano movement. That's awesome. <laughs> That was the wrong button. <laughs> it's all right. Hey, it's all right. I'm like a kid with this, man. It's, we got all kinds of... Man, anyways, that was the wrong button. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That was the right button right there. Hey, now this shit right here is fun, man. That's great. This shit is fun. And this Technology. Is, hey, bro. Hey, this is a fucking... These little things right here, man. I mean, this is all cool and shit, but... All this little shit right here ain't nothing without a person like yourself sitting right there, you know. Well, you're important also because you're making it happen. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just trying to. This is we trading information, you know. I'm trying to educate myself too during this, you know. And um, this is a platform. This is a platform. And uh, the cool thing about this is I choose who get who gets on this platform. That's great, you know. And uh, and I just want uh, great, powerful people like yourself, you know, on this platform. Thank you. You know, and there's different, uh, there's different levels of great and powerful. You know, someone might be great and powerful with, uh, with music, artwork, you know, tattooing, painting, you know, writing books, you know, just all levels of it. I want all the greatness right here. That's great. You know, uh, I always had dreams of being great at something. You know, and um, I mean, in my head, I felt like I did OK with it. But at the end of the day, you know, um, it all depends on how the uh, your audience interacts with it. Right. So it's all a, it's a number game. Right. You know, it's like Brown Berets, man. We're trying to recruit. You're trying to recruit. Right. Yes. It's, you know, it's a great thing. It's a number thing. Well, you gotta, always got to have the numbers up. You always got because you lose people all the time. People get married. People. You know, hey, fall down. Why you know? the fuck does marriage do that? <laughs> what the fuck? Well, you know, people. Hey, yeah, you know, people do other things. You know, like I. No, got, you yeah. said the first fucking thing was marriage. <laughs> well, that's why. See, that's what happens. See. Uh, so, so from an old from an from an OG like yourself, right? Yeah. Don't get married. Uh, it's gonna fuck your life up. Just well, when you I mean, thought you were going to do that, you're not doing that no more? Well, I think you can do it maybe once, but not twice and three times. You know, like, like some people, they go through like three wives and have 25 kids. And, and it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's an endless thing. You know, at some point, you have to go back to your life study, whatever your life study is. <laughs> yeah, and just concentrate on that. Yeah. Because all that other shit ain't working. Well, it's not so much working, but it's just you're not, you're not uh, uh, giving the community uh, the time uh, of day that it needs to survive. Yeah. And many people are not surviving because we're, we're so busy uh, drinking beer, making babies, and eating pizza, we forget that our community is in a need. And they, we forget that people are actually dying out there because we've ignored our community, and the system has ignored our community. The schools have ignored our community. They won't even recognize us. And a lot of colleges and universities, they won't even let me speak there because they're afraid that I'm going to bring in a new campaign. Oh, they feel you're going to you're gonna fucking create an uproar. You're going to fucking wake in of the minds. You're going to put a light bulb over a bunch of brown skinned heads, right? You know? I mean, like. <laughs> well, something needs to gonna, happen. You're going to plant the seed. They don't want you planting that seed. Well, something needs to happen because what is happening is, let me tell you the truth. The truth is that, you know, 
there are, right now there are like 5,000, no, I'm sorry. Right now there's 5 million Chicano students, Mexican American students in the state of California. And they're all being brainwashed to be white. And so that's why it's important because we, we, we have, I mean, there's more Chicanos now than there was back then. Three times more, four times more. Yeah, we've been, motherfuckers have been just fucking like rabbits. Well, not just that. It's just, <laughs> it's not just that. But hey, what about the abortion laws that are going on in the other states, man? You hear about that shit? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. fucking crazy, huh? Well, it's, a, it's, 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 it's I, I know what it's about. It's because the white folks, they, they want to, they want, they don't want the white girls to stop to have abortions because they want more white people. Yeah, because they know the the raza and, and and the brothers and sisters they just they're fucking popping them out. Not just that, but they're, they're, <laughs> I don't mean to say it like well, that. But hey, know. hey, but hey, real quick though, man, what's wrong with fucking wait drinking, fucking, and eating pizza? <laughs> I was gonna say that a minute ago. Well, mm -hmm. it's it's okay. Like, for example, okay, uh, you know, I had a couple of beers last night. Okay? But that's all, you know. The thing is, when you when you have the hangover, you can't do nothing right, you know, because you're so busy having a hangover. Okay? Oh, I feel you. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna tell you like this. I stop like when I do these little podcasts. I celebrate because this is my downtime, and I'm doing something that I enjoy, and I'm spending it with fucking like people like yourself, right? I mean, like, and it doesn't happen every day, all you know, every day of the month. So I'm enjoying this, but. I, I, I quit the alcohol out at the beginning of this year. I mean, I stopped for like a good, like, I don't know, uh, three, four months or something like that. And then I gradually, now I just, you know, I do, you know, parties and, you know, when it's time to celebrate, I'll have myself a drink. But right now my, my concentration, my focus is, you know, doing stuff like this and elevating myself and help elevating other people like yourself. I mean, giving a platform, you know, and uh, just accomplishing things. And I, and I noticed that when I'm not, when I'm drinking less, um, I'm accomplishing more things, you know. I used to plan it out like, uh, you know, like someone would say, "Hey, let's uh, let's get together this Sunday," you know, and I'd be like, "Ah, oh, fuck, man, I'm gonna probably drink Saturday night. They're gonna want to fucking get up, go do, I mean, barbecue, whatever the fuck it might. I mean, whatever it might be, you know. And I'm I'm already thinking like, damn, I'm gonna be hungover on Sunday. I ain't gonna feel like doing shit, you know. And I, and a lot of times I'm fucking uh, before I was uh, planning around my hangover, you know. So. Anyways, yeah, well, not just that, but levels. Okay, uh, we're talking about levels of of intelligence. Talking about levels of, of ambition. Uh, one of the problems that I see uh, over and over again, because you know, I, I taught Chicago studies for thirteen years. I taught speech in colleges. I, I taught speech for three years. Uh, I taught theater. Okay, and I'm still teaching. What I'm trying to say is that I have seen this over and over again, where the majority of the students. All they're thinking about is graduating from college or graduating from the university, buying a house and buying a car. And that's all they want. And I'm saying to myself, that's kind of pity when you stop to think about it. they're going to give their life, they're going to sacrifice their whole life. Just for, for a car and a house. For a car and a house. And that's say, it. you know what, I got the car, I got the house, I'm done. Yeah. And then the problem is when they turn 60 or 70, they die from being overworked. So what, yeah, so, you know, 100%. So what about this? You know what? I bounce this around in my head all the fucking time because I fucking uh, I'm a I'm an electrician. I get up at three forty five in the morning to go to work, work my fucking ass off. Come home, tired as shit. I don't feel like doing anything. I I struggle to do what I have to do for myself and my family around me. And the next day I do it again. I do it again. I do it again. I do it again. Routine. Yeah, routine. You know. And I think about it. I'm like, fuck. I, I'm I'm doing this. I have to keep this routine up to maintain and keep the things that I fucking I've I've uh I've gotten. You know what I mean? I've I've been blessed to get you know a house, a couple vehicles, you know a uh you know a watercraft, whatever you know the things that I have, which are all material things. But at the end of the day, am I not living? Would it be better to just be a fucking renter? Uh, get by, uh, just get get by uh, whatever it takes to get by in life. The 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 absolute uh, means, you know what I mean? Like you know the, uh, and what and just to be happier, you know. I mean, like what what is it? Do do I work my ass off and just have things and be tired all the time, or do I work less, enjoy life more, have less things? You know, I always bounce that on my head. Yeah, it comes to, you know, uh, security at one end and freedom at the other end. And sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of, 
of your security for freedom. Yeah. Because freedom and even freedom of the mind is important. What we have is a mass number of people who are so busy working in this routine, they ain't got time for Chicano history. They yeah. don't got time for they the don't got time for nothing. Yeah. You know, I just passed up a I just passed up a role. Uh well, I don't know if I was gonna land the role, but I was offered an uh, audition for the Mayans. Have you heard of the Mayans TV show? Yeah. Yeah, I was offered a uh, uh, central casting. Uh, one of the girls got at me uh, Thursday night. I didn't see it till Friday morning when I'm at the butt crack of dawn to go to work. And they said, hey, uh, uh, we're interested on in having you. You got picked. We're interested on in having you come in for an audition. You know, let us, uh, let us know if you can come in. And uh, anyways, long story short, I'm fucking tired of shit. I said, all right, I'm going to go in. You want me to go in probably uh, after, right after work for an audition? You know, I'm dirty, got bags under my eyes. I mean, I probably should have still done it. I guess it's no excuse. You know, I probably should have still done it, but I was just thinking about it, man. I just, I passed up the opportunity. I declined. I, I declined the audition. You know, just because I knew it was gonna it was gonna require a few days uh, for my work schedule that I'd have to take time off. You know, so I said, well, what's more important? Do I let, do I let my boss down, my contractor down? Uh, um, cause I got to take days off and they're counting on me to come to work and, and get things done, you know, or do I go and get this, you know, a couple day gig, you know what I mean? You know, and I don't ever want to jeopardize something that I, something good, something good that I have going on that is a reliable, my, re yeah, my main not, income, no. my main source of fucking money to feed myself and my babies and keep the roof over my head. You know what I mean? You know, so I just like, man, I, I thought about it. I was like, I don't know. Well, you know, for one thing, I don't know if I'm going to land the role, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, anyways, yeah, I just declined it. Nonetheless, nonetheless, you, at least you're still doing something for the Rasa. Yeah. Okay. Like, like this broadcast, a podcast. At least you're doing something. Okay. I'm talking about the people that ain't doing nothing. No, I get you. I I'm get you. I'm talking about the people that, that, that don't do nothing and their brain is already gone because the routine is already, the program yeah. is all, the white program is already controlled their brain. They're lost. They can't think. They can't write. They can't do poetry. They can't sing. They can't dance. They're just gone. Yeah. Because the routine controlled the brain, they let the routine control the brain. Gotcha. You know, and so that's yeah. what, you know. That's no, but I, any anything that is ever said, you know, what I mean, like I, 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 I will always, I will always uh, put it. I can always somehow, some way, put it in context of my life. You know, uh, I'm not saying that the fucking, uh, you know, the the government has me. They're controlling me what to do. You know, I do what the fuck I want to do. If I want to work, I'm going to work. If I don't want to work, I'm not going to work. If I want to do this podcast, I'm going to do it. Like, you know, we do what we want to do. You know, it's just the type of individual that I am for the good and bad, you know, but uh, I, I can always like when, when you, when you're saying these things, I get where I get the angle you're going at, but I, I always like reflect it on myself because I'm a very reflective person. I'm always trying to make myself better. And I'm always, I'm always trying to figure things out, you know, because I did for a lot of years, I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't put too much thought on how I was living. I was just fucking living, you know? I was living, I was flying off the fucking, I was flying off the hinge, you know? No, I, hear you. I, I was hear you. flying off the fucking hinge. I didn't give him the two thought. I had a fucking, I had a case of the fuck it's every day, <laughs> all day. Hey, whoa, whoa, you wanna go there? Ah, hold on. Fuck it, let's do it. You know what I mean? But, anyways. Well, that's what we need, bro. We need brown, we need brown, brown berets because we gotta keep the movement going. Uh, like I said, sometimes people just are in the movement and then all of a sudden they get married or all of a sudden they get a scholarship and they run off to the university. Uh, you know, and we need we need more people to, to participate in this movement in order for it to be a real movement. And we need people to stop making excuses. You know, a lot of people out there talking about, oh, I'm, I'll go to the meeting, but I have to do this. I can't make it to the meeting, but I have to do that. I have, and those, those are what we call... Commu committed butts, you know, they're, they're, com they're committed, but they have something else to do. So you have to make a priority in your life and contribute something to the, to, to the Chicano movement, uh, contribute something to the Brown Braves. You can contribute some time and help out organizing events as we have done for so many years. Uh, we are a historical organization, well known uh, uh, throughout the country for, for our ability to organize events. Uh, history is events. We are history. We are part of history. Uh, and all the way back, uh, and I think that's one of the things. I think you really have to understand how history works for us and how history works against us. And we need to change history so history can work. Ooh, speak. Speak on it, my brother. 
Big brother, speak on it, man. You, hey, uh, we create you creating history right now. This this is a document that's gonna be in YouTube that people can always type in and pop up and study, you know, the words that are coming out your mouth right now, man. Speak on it. Hey, you got some more questions right here. Sure. Ask, yeah. Okay, so check it out. Um, you got Highland Park 50 right here. This is an off the wall question, but can you ask the doctor what he thinks of Chicanos marrying Anglos? Well, I, I really don't have a, <clears throat> I'm really not against it. Uh, but then again, if there's too much intermarriage, then we will no longer exist. I think that's what's happening in the white community back uh, back east, is that there's so much intermarriage uh, uh, with 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 uh, the white community. Uh, it's unbelievable, and also a lot of interracial marriage with with Asians, uh, and uh, a lot of interracial marriage all around. I think sometimes uh, a woman or a man may think that they have to marry a white person in order to survive, and sometimes times that's the case. Yeah, no, for sure. Hey, you need to get that motherfucking, you got a great job. You know what I mean? You fucking old as shit. She's in her 20s. She needs some uh, stable income. I love you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, <laughs> no. yeah but there's an opposite, opposite thing going on, like in Orange County. You go to yeah. Orange County, you see a lot, of, a lot of Chicano men married to white girls. The men stay home, take care of the kids, and the white girls go to work. Yeah. Because they got the good jobs. Hell yeah. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> anyway, get your ass to work, girl. <laughs> get your ass to bed. You got to get up early for work in the morning. I don't want to hear it. You got, you got some more questions right now, right. bro. Let's see what we got. Uh, man, doctor, uh, how can we get the young to listen to concerning our uh, Doctor Sanchez? How can we get the young to listen to listen to us concerning our rasa? Well, I think it's you just got to stop them in their tracks and, and, and let them know a little bit about the history of the, for example, the Chicano movement. Uh, I'll go over the little bit of the Chicano movement. Uh, the Brown Braves organized the the walkouts, okay, and that was in, and uh, we all went to jail for that. <laughs> uh, Thirteen, uh, most about nine Brown Braves went to jail for the school walkouts and a grand jury indictment. Uh, but we were able to spark a, a, a movement uh made international news before you knew it. we walked out the schools and it was we were at the coffee house and i told the brown braids come on we're gonna go walk out the school we can go walk out of school come on we're gonna try to walk out the school you know we got nothing to lose we got everything to gain so let's 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 do it you know so you were that dude always pumping everybody up huh yeah well somebody's got well motivation so you know i motivate people at the coffee house then the first night it didn't go over too well, but, but you know they keep coming back. And second night, and the third night at the coffee house, finally we got a couple of people, brave people, you know, like Ralph Ramirez and a couple other people, Cruz O'Malley. Let's go, let's go do it. Let's go walk out to school. And so when we walked out Garfield High School, it was just Brown Braves that walked out the first school. And now everybody came running out of the school, and before you knew it, it was international news. Within one hour, all the press was there. Two hours, all the pre more press were there. And so when finally I, 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 the sheriff came and got me. The funny thing is the sheriff was going to arrest me on the spot. And I talked him out of it. I told him, what are you going to charge me with? He said, they said, we don't know. I said, you, can't, you don't know what you're going to charge me. You got to let me go because you don't got no charge on me. Okay? <laughs> yeah, right. So they didn't let me go. Okay, so a few minutes later, about an hour, half hour later, they came to me to arrest me. Again, but I ran, you know, and uh, I ran. I sprint because you know I was a fast runner. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be. Everybody's a fast runner. Well, not everybody. I yeah. was always a fast runner when the cops were chasing me. Oh yeah, I was fucking hitting them fences like a motherfucking track star. You know what I mean? <laughs> the Olympics. Yeah. So then, yeah. So so I had two cop, two sheriffs chasing me on my tail, swinging their right behind and back of me. They were swinging their sticks at me, and I could feel the wind from their sticks and behind me. That just made me run a little faster. And I was able to get away. Yeah. But that was the first, that was the walk. So we did the walkouts. That was the main thing. The Brown Braves, we did organize the uh, moratoriums, the Chicago moratoriums, the demonstrations, the mass demonstrations. Uh, we organized a march out, the La Reconquista, a march from, from uh, Sacramento to Calexico, lasted three months. Uh, we also organized the, the occupation of Catalina Island. And so, and plus, we organized the Brown Bray organization, national organization, which was like we had five thousand members at one time. So we that was history. 
Yeah. And so people have to know about the history of the Brown Berets to really know, you know, how this whole thing came about. The civil rights movement. We had our own civil rights movement. We hear about other people's civil rights movement, but in the schools, they don't talk about the Chicago civil rights movement. We're ignored. And that's why we have to tell the history. Yeah. I mean, they need to put that shit in the history books, right? Some you know? of it is in the history books, but not in all history books. Yeah. Hey, you got another question right here. Uh, we got someone that wants to know, how do you join the Brown Berets? Well, you can call this number here. It's uh, 323-849-9122. 323-849-9122. Okay. And, and Rosie will talk to you. And she'll give you the rundown of what it takes, qualifications, all the above on joining the Brown Berets. Yes. Also, we have a website called, uh, you go to uh, Brown Beret, small letters, Brown Beret dot U.S. slash. That's Brown Beret, small letters dot U.S. slash. All together, no spaces. Okay, cool. Yeah, let me get that number down. Let me type it in right here. Which number is it down there? there? One, three, two, three. Okay, let, me, let me type this shit in real quick. You know, joining the Brown Braves also contributes to the um, intellectual development of, the, of of whoever joins because they learn how to become a leader in their community, uh, but they also learn how to become an historical figure in their community uh, in, in such a way where they are remembered. I mean, so many people, for example, on your gravestone when you die, what's going to say, oh, he ate a lot of pizza and drank a lot of beer? No, it should say in your gravestone that you contributed something to civil rights and to your community. That's what it should say. I mean, yeah, you don't want to be known for fucking beating your fucking wife and fucking just, you know, your dick and fucking balls hanging out all out all the time. I mean, yeah, you want to be known for something. I mean, you know, they, they make it, the people people leave behind your kids or whatever, you know, uh, make them feel proud about, hey, my pops was this, my pops stood up for that. 100%. Yeah. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. And, the, and the funny thing is I get, I get calls all the time when people were, from people calling about the movement way back then, you know, saying, about, do you know this person? Do you know that person? Did you know my dad? And all those kinds of calls, like if, like if a lot of people got lost since then. Yeah, no, they probably did. And people are looking for them. They're looking for, they're looking at old pictures and they see you fucking leading the pack and they see moms and pops and the fucking following you down the street or wherever the hell you're doing. And yeah, they want some insight. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, a lot of people, I got lost along the way as well. You know, sometimes I'm looking for a little insight in regards to you know my family history or you know the roots uh you know history history period history is everything man i just got into i, I recently just got into history like the past like year or so i watched a lot of youtube stuff on history i'm kind of like a nerd these days man and uh you know it's just you got to know your history you got to know where you came from or, or where you come from or where this world has come from in order to you know i mean understand what's in front of you it all comes back to identity. You know, without identity, you could have multiple identities, and we don't need that, right? I mean, I, I would say that I, I almost, I almost have multiple identities, right? And I'm going to say that too because my mom's Mexican and Nicaraguan, and my pops is Russian Jewish. Oh, that's good. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I, it's, it's, it's. But you know, but you know where your roots are. That's the thing. I know where my roots are. You know what I mean? But it, that can tend to be looked at as multiple identities. You know, sometimes with uh, Rasa, you know what I mean? You're 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 too white, and then with the white, you're you're Mexican. You know what I mean, you know, it's just it's a uh, it's it's a. Uh, you know, I mean, sometimes if you might feel like uh, the people are putting you on a fence to straddle. You know what I mean? And it's a, it's a, you know you know how it is, especially with Mexican. Sometimes yeah. you're not Mexican enough. Sometimes you're too Mexican. You know what I mean? But that's where we have the brown braid identity and the brown braid culture. Yeah, for sure. I get that. I like that. You know, um, I just, uh, yeah, nah, I like what you're doing. Hey, you smoke? No. No, you don't smoke, huh? Not just a little bit? I mean, Elon Musk uh, smoked. I mean, he got crucified for it. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be responsible for getting you crucified, but. Uh, no, thank you. Okay, we'll pass on this. And I'm not going to even light this up, man, because I don't, I, don't I don't want you to get contact high, and then, you know, you might start talking crazy. <laughs> 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 you might start telling stories you shouldn't oh, be telling. Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of stories to tell. You heard a lot of stories. Yeah. You, you ever heard one like mine? Let me hear you got some more. You got some more questions right here. You want to ask some more questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Um okay, ask Dr. Sanchez. Okay, let me I, I we got two of them, but I'm gonna I'll ask you this one first. Uh have the Brown Berets ever organized? With Cesar Chavez, 
Yes, we we uh, did a lot to support their movement. Uh, matter of fact, we in some cases we actually helped them win uh, particular strikes uh, that they had uh, against the the farmers, the ranchers. You know, the ranchers are mostly Republicans, and and we you know the, the campesinos, the farmers, and you know we surprised that today uh, a lot of the farmers are Chicanos. You know, working in the fields just to just to go to college. Yeah, for sure. I and, mean, I saw some things in the news. There was a there was this one girl that I think it made CNN and she was uh, standing in the field in her uh, uh, her gown, her graduation gown with her father who was in the field. He's a fucking farmer and shit. You know I mean, and uh, he put her through college by you know planting those seeds and picking those uh, fruits and whatever the hell he's Jobs. doing. Jobs. I mean, we cannot survive. That. That's the other thing a lot of people, people say, oh, you're supposed to be revolutionary. You're not supposed to care about jobs. We have to care about jobs because we have to care about the survivals of our members. We have to care, care about the survival of our community. You know, people work in the farms out there because there's no jobs in the valley or way out there in the agricultural areas, in the, in the rural areas, there's no jobs. The only job you can get is working in the field. My grand, my, my dad worked in the fields, for example. My grandparents worked in the fields. And so it's 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 a job. Yeah. That's where most of the Rasa work at is in the fields in the United States. We do we we make the food and you know we take we we uh, you know take care of the chickens and we take care of the cows and you know and all that. Anyway, the thing is the jobs, but here in the cities, the main job that the Chicanos have are mechanics, auto mechanics. So we're the auto mechanics of, of this country. And we're also the the farmers of this country. I mean, when I go when I go get my car fixed or whatever the hell I'm doing with my car, like yeah, most of the time I see a rasa right there. You know what I mean? There's not too many times I'll see a brother there or I'll see a white dude. Mostly it's, it's a rasa, you know what I mean? So yeah, they got that fucking trade down. Uh they got it cornered. Well, that, yeah. Hey, so check it out. So 2019, you know, joining right. the Brown. You joined the Brown Berets in 2019. What does that consist of? What are we doing? Well, maybe you, you join a, you uh, you join the organization. You take an oath to stick to nonviolence. Uh, you take a an, uh, nonviolence. So, but what if you're being attacked or the violence is on upon you? Well, you, that's that's you have case. the right to uh, defend yourself, right? Well, of course, of course, that's, yeah. you have the right to survive. Yeah. But primarily, uh, we do this because we don't want to attract uh, negative attention, uh, police attention. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, if you go out there and start waving at the cops, the cops are going to come and get you. Yeah. And so, and then we also tell Brombies, oh, you know, don't be showing no weapons because that they can use that in court against you. Yeah. And uh, they they can just take a picture of you with a weapon. You Next you know, you're getting the whole organization indicted on some fucking shit. You know, what I mean? that's like some type of organized. Uh, crime operation you know fucking oh we're trying to create a safe organization exactly and that's the main thing uh back then it wasn't we were not that of us that much of a safe organization because i, mean, I think i went to the lapd arrested me back in the days of like three or four times maybe five times i spent i don't know maybe uh, six months in jail altogether that was back then when we were had those when we, it was really rough in the beginning yeah uh but then we learned because we learned that going to jail, going to court all the time, is just wasting our energy, wasting our money, wasting our time. And we are smart enough. We came to the agreement that we are smart enough. We don't need to break the law to make movement. Yeah, Cedar Chavez also talked about nonviolence. Nonviolence is is what we used successfully. For example, Catalina Island that was peacefully taken. The island was taken. We could have had the island, okay, but we lost the island because there was a bunch of Brown Brace were talking to the police and try to sabotage your or, or the organization, and so we lost the island because there were some some Brown Brace that were that were, that were police. Anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is, nonviolence is uh, we're smart enough we can get things done uh, with nonviolence. Also, uh, uh, going to meetings is very important. That's so important within our organization. Uh, going to meetings and also organizing groups. Uh, the way we do that is whoever is the head of a group, he becomes a captain, he's the captain of the group. And then he has a body of people behind him. And they're all locked into our national headquarters, which is here in Los Angeles. So there's different chapters. We have some chapters. Yeah. So do all do all the Brown Berets uh, operate under one umbrella? No. Uh, there are a lot of Brown Beret chapters out there that refuse to join us because they want to, you know, they want to do their own thing. Uh, many times they don't do nothing. We're an action group. Uh, we require that we always do action. Uh, and action consists of protesting, protesting, press conferences, conferences, 
uh, going to, to meetings, uh, showing our colors, uh, organizing the Rasa. Uh, what happens is people, don't, their boundaries are that they don't want to follow us because they don't want to do anything. So how do the cops look at you guys in this day and age when you're walking around with a brown bray on and, uh, you know, you guys are out there protesting, you guys are marching, whatever you guys are doing, talking to the media. Uh, how do the cops look at you as a threat? Are you getting, are you getting heat from the cops? No, we're not getting heat from the cops because we're not, we're not going after the cops in such a way uh, where it looks like we're trying to get to at them. What we do is when somebody gets killed, uh, for example, uh, Angie, uh, South Pasadena. Yeah, Angie Guzman, she was killed. Uh, we we, de we did demonstration press conferences and we would get the word across. South Pasadena, um, you know, Vanessa Marquez, movie star. You know, she was filled with bullets, 19 bullets. Uh, and she didn't deserve that. So we were able to, and that, that whole thing was quiet down. I mean, it was, it was like. Swept under the rug. It was all swept under the rug. They even hid her flowers in, her, in front of her house. They, wow. they put them in a the trash can so nobody would know where she lived. What, what, hap what happened to her again? What's the story behind her? Well, what happened was uh, they came on a, a, a 50 51 uh, welfare check to check her out. Uh, somebody said that, that she was having mental problems. And so they said that she had a toy gun and, and they, uh, they shot her 19 times. Cops did. Yeah, they, yeah. South Pasadena cops? Yeah, they shot her 19. Three policemen. Wow. Emptied their guns on her. On they, the em they emptied her yeah, guns. Yeah, she's only 85 pounds, you know, and uh, they, they emptied the gun on her. So uh, we both, yeah, we protested. We were able to. So when you're protesting, then you're, 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 you're going at the cops then. Yeah, we're going. So when you so when you're going at the cops, and so what, what kind of like what are they? They're just like ah, oh, these guys let them do what they got to do and get out of here, or whatever. Like just like how how is that? Well, are, are they just like you know what? I'm gonna pull this dude over and and find something wrong with his vehicle or something, and I'm gonna give this guy a ticket. Like you know what kind of what's what's going on? Well, you have to be careful how you play. You know how you how, how you present yourself and and how you deal with this matter. Uh, for example, with uh, Vanessa, we went straight to the city council. And, and the cops could see, we, we went up there to speak at the city council. The cops can see where we're coming from. We're coming from civil rights. Were they, were, they, were uh, what kind of, uh, were they affected? Were like, you know what I mean? What did you, like, what kind of response did you get back? Well, we got the response. When we got back. They didn't want to do nothing. We, we were asking that they be fired. The ones that, that shot her. That yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's still in the courts and it looks like it's, they're going to win the case. They're going to win the case. And yeah. They're going to keep their jobs and keep doing what they're doing. That's the problem. That's, that's, a, that's the scary part. Right? The scary part, a lot of people don't know, it's not the cops that's the problem. The problem is the politicians. The politicians are the bosses of the cops. Yeah. That's why That's why we're called Brown Brain National Party. That's what our organization is called, Brown Brain National Party. That means we're also political. where We put wagers on, on politicians for not getting involved with the community, for not stopping police violence. There's too many cops out there and too many police, uh, too many politicians out there who are police state advocates. So what it comes down to, basically, it's a money thing because if the Brown Berets had X amount of money and you have X amount of money, then you have politicians on your side, in your pocket, in your, in your team, whatever, however you want to say it, you know, and then you can be more effective if you uh able to create more money. Let me give you an example. A lot of people don't realize that the, the police department are ruled by the city councils and by the board of supervisors. For, you know, the sheriff is controlled by the board of supervisors. So the board of supervisors should be at fault for any killing. The city councils uh, should be at fault for any killing. So those are the real bosses. The cops are just taking orders. Yeah. I mean, that is, it's the, the, yeah, the parents and the, the cops are the kids. You know what I mean? And if they're not going to keep their kids in order, they're gonna, the kids are going to do what the fuck they want to do. Yeah. And they're, yeah. So the city councils and, and, the, and the board of supervisors are not keeping the cops in order. So they're, so they're actually, they're the real uh, problem in the community. They're the, the real police state, the, the people in office, and political office. So those are the ones who have us in our the way we are. For example, why, why are the colleges and universities still racist against Chicano professors? They hardly ever hire Chicano. I know because I've, I've worked at so many colleges. They hardly ever hire Chicano professors because it's a racist system. The universities, the same thing. They hardly ever hire Chicano uh, professors at the universities because it's a racist system. The police system is a racist system. So we have all these systems that are the schools are against us, the police are against us, city councils are against us, the government, state governments, the prisons are against us, the courts are against us. Everybody is against us because they're too busy going along with the program. 
that's the, the Big Brother program. Yeah. The police state. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, they're not they're not used to seeing a lot of uh, Chicanos uh, rise to certain levels, and when they when they do rise to those certain levels to get those certain job positions, they don't want to give them to them because they're not used to see them. They're like, hold on a second, you need to you need to go over there and work on that car over there, or you need to mow that lawn. Is that is that kind of like what you're saying? You know, yeah, it's anti and for example, anti role model. Yeah, especially uh, uh, Chicano teachers in public schools. I mean, the schools are always against the, the men, the, the Mexican American men, the Chicano men, the teachers. Because they're against the, the idea of, of a male role model. They don't yeah. want us to have a male role model. You know, even in our homes, they don't want a male role model. And they try to break down our families. They try to break down our trust. Yeah. You know, they try to break down our leadership. And our leadership are the, are the male male role model and the women role model. Those so, are our leaders. So I, I think just all the way around the map, they're just constantly just trying to stunt our growth. Like you can look in all kinds of different levels, even the music industry. You know, what I mean, who do who do the uh, young Chicanos, uh, who do the kids uh, idolize these days? You know, what I mean, none of them are rasa. You know, what I mean, they're all black. They're you know, what I mean, uh, you know, other other uh, races outside of uh, their culture. You know, and it just seems like I mean, I know a lot of guys in the music industry that are really talented individuals. They're you know Chicano, whatever, and uh, they're having a hard time breaking into the music industry. Why? Because you know. Just like you said, when it comes to colleges and uh, professors, uh, Chicano, Chicano, whatever, uh, professors, you know, I mean, they don't want to give them that job. And it seems like sometimes they don't want to let uh, certain uh, individuals, Rasa, fucking shine, man. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, I'll give you an example of the city of Los Angeles. It's one of the biggest departments in the city of Los Angeles, the Department of Housing. Uh, and here you have all the all these um, Chicanos and Mexican Americans, Rasa, going over there for jobs. At the city hall, and they make them all into two clerks, into file clerks. They all got degrees, and then all the other people who don't have degrees are telling them what to do. <laughs> yeah, and so it's it's it's. Oh, you got a degree? All right, bro, go over there and uh, just uh, fucking uh, file those fucking papers over there. And uh, yeah, that's after, it. Yeah, give me give me some coffee after you're done with that shit. <laughs> it's yeah. bad. It's it's it's. I can't. The the discrimination in the job market is rampant. Man, what do you got to do? You got a strong arm. You got to pull out the gun and fucking pull a strong arm robbery and get your foot in that fucking door. Like, what the fuck we got to do? Well, you got to organize is what you got to do. You got to organize. Yeah. The strength is the strength is in the numbers, right? Always. It's... Strength is in the numbers. So how do we how do we fucking organize? How do we uh, get well, the numbers up? You got to educate the youngsters. Well, example, you know, like one of the only one of the last, uh, you know, uh, you know. One of the last pillars in our community is the uh, Brown Brain National Party, our group. And uh, we try to focus unity in our community and promote unity in the schools, even though the schools are trying to stop us. Uh, they're trying to stop us, but trying to ignore that the Brown Brains were the ones who are, were the main vanguard of the Chicago movement. And they're trying to erase that. And they're trying to bring somebody else who were not involved as the leaders, fake leaders, and so over and over again, they continue to, for example, during the walkouts, uh, we, we just did a bunch of uh, pa uh, panels, discussions at colleges and universities. And they wouldn't, the Brown Braves, they wouldn't let the Brown Braves speak. And they were bringing out other fake people, taking all the all the valor, stolen what, valor. What if, that, what if that auditorium or wherever that took place was filled with Brown Braves? Well, then that's another case. Then they would let you speak, right? Right. Let's get these numbers up. Get hey, the up. I need everybody, everybody that's listening now and everybody that's going to play this back. Hey, Brown Berets, let's get the numbers up. Hey, the, the books are open right now, and these guys are recruiting Brown Berets. You know, if you're all about uh, your pride and uh, all the above, you, know, you need to join this movement right here, right? It's a movement, and we need people who are willing to give a little bit of time and a little bit of heart. Heart. I mean, don't come in this motherfucker spineless and shit, huh? We don't need no spineless jellyfish, right? Right. Yeah, we need mother. We need you. Need solid individuals. You need soldiers, right? That's right. You need soldiers. I mean, we're all you know soldiers. I mean, even I'm a soldier. You know, we're all soldiers uh, of peace you know, for the unity of La Raza. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Hey, what? Check this out. You you have a lot of questions. I mean, this is you're this is the, only the third podcast that I've had, man. But your fucking questions are blowing up right now. You want to ask her? Sure. All right, here we go. Uh, let's go. 
You know uh, Marilyn E. Lopez? Yes. Okay. Yeah, he's a, he's been asking a few questions right he's here. He's our public relations person. Okay. Uh, do you want to answer uh, one of his questions, or do you want to answer one of the other people's questions? Either one. Either one. All right. Let me. I'm not gonna leave him out, man, because I don't know him, and then I'm gonna see him one day on the streets, and he's gonna be like, "Hey, man, fucking ask my questions." Let me see. Uh, how against? Let me see. He's got a few questions. Uh, why are the new uniforms? Well, it's 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 because we try to distinguish ourselves uh, as the uh, leaders uh, of the Brown Beret movement. Uh, we wore uh, before we used to wear khaki shirts. Now we wear dark brown shirts. Uh, it makes you look thinner, and uh, <laughs> and it's 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 just kind of to show a different era. This is a different era. This is a different time than the past. And we have to we have to uh, build ourselves for the future. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, I know you've been doing this for years. I don't. I'm not going to ask you your age, man, but you look great. Thank you. I mean, I see these old pictures of you, man, as a youngster, and you still you, <laughs> you still got them looks, man. You still got them them young looks, man. You got the good genes in you, that's for sure. Let's ask. Uh, here we go, uh, Doctor Sanchez. Do you consider all Chicanos Native Americans, since we are all Native Americans? Yes, uh, uh, all Chicanos are, are Native Americans. Uh, the, the blood of, of Mexican American Chicanos, La Raza, I think we have more than 50% uh, Native uh, American blood. Um, our heritage and our inherited memory uh, come from, you know, from the Aztecs and from the, the tribes and the civilizations, actually. I mean, black people don't know the Azteca Empire had uh, 240 cities. Uh, for example, I mean, these are people who are organized. They're well organized. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they were defeated by Cortez's army and and Cortez's enemies. Uh, but this, these were civilizations. You know, we are a civilization. What happens has happened is that the, that our society we no longer have a Chicano society. Our society has been wiped out. And I said part part of the reason is because of Chicano studies. Chicano studies doesn't doesn't direct us to continue with our society. It doesn't direct us to continue with the Mexican American society either. You know, so since our society or our civilization has been wiped out, it's hard for us to, to connect our power. It's hard for us to connect our resources. And so we need to bring back the Chicano society uh, so we can have more resources. I mean, nowadays it seems like the Chicano society, man, everybody's out for themselves, you know what I mean? And then when you got when you got you know the brothers or sisters, I mean our Chicano brothers or sisters doing something, it seems like you know the the raza are the are the are the first ones, man, to just kind of like uh, uh, um, you know what I mean, just kind of like criticize or or judge or you know it's just sometimes it seems like our own will prey on our own. Opinionated, very opinionated against our own people. That's why we come up. That's why we have terms like anti-Chicano, you know, anti brown beret. You know, these are people who are who are really trying to stop us from organizing because they've accepted the gringo orientation, which is anti-brown, anti-Chicano. I think fools just be hating, man. They're just fucking haters. Well, it's, 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 <laughs> well not just that, but it's also the orientation that we have. We need to bring, uh, we need more of a, a philosophical orientation. And that, well, I'm a doctor of philosophy. And, you know, I understand how philosophy works. I understand that we've lost our ideology. We've lost our philosophy. We need to bring it back. How do we do that? You need to educate people on those 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 ideas. Matter of fact, back in the days, there was a lot of books written in Chicano literature, a lot of Chicano poetry that we can go come back to. Uh, I'm right now. I'm, I'm writing a piece on 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 uh, the Chicano uh, uh, intelligence over the years. You know, what we need we need more yous and less of me's. Not just that, but we, <laughs> yeah, because there's too many of me's out there. Yeah, <laughs> we need more we, we power, you fucking know? knuckleheads. Yeah, we power, but not just you know, it's the that's the way they're taught. For example, in the colleges and universities, they teach us to be competitive, you know, competitive, you know, to get the dollar, take the dollar from the other guy, and that's success. You know? Yeah, and so you know, a lot of us aren't, aren't into so much trying to take, take each other's money, but the problem is uh, that our behavioral system has been affected to the point where people are just only thinking about me, 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 I, 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 and they have forgotten the power and unity. They've forgotten the power in canonismo. Yes, sir. You want to ask another question? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, this is a good one. I like this one. Jennifer Jackson, I know you. 
Appreciate the good questions. Here we go. She's asking, why do you think the, the Chicanos and the Blacks have not united if we are both being suppressed in the same way? Well, because basically uh, I've, I've gone out there to, and I continue to go out there to talk to some, some Black groups, but they are very weak. The, the, the Black movement, in, for example, in, in South Central Los Angeles, is very, very weak, almost not even there. And same goes with the Chicano movement. There's no Chicano organizations in East L.A., for example. Where did they go? They're gone. The only Chicano organization in East L.A. is the Brown Berets, the yeah. Brown Berets National Party. And we're trying to get them numbers up. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're the black, there's no uh, Black Panthers operating in uh, L.A. area? Not anymore. Not anymore, yeah. huh? Did that get shut down by the government? Yeah, they were infiltrated. They were infiltrated. And so yeah, I saw them marching down the street when there was a, there was a, a uh, Japanese guy in the ranks, you know, wearing a Black Panther costume. <laughs> Yeah. And I said, that, that don't look right. You know, and he turned out to be FBI. Oh shit. Wow. That was in the black, that was in the, the Black Panther. The I last mean, of the Black Panther. I mean, Panthers. why would they get an Asian dude for a fucking informant? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, bro, you're gonna be the first one, suspect. <laughs> suspect number one, the fucking Asian dude. Yeah. Who the fuck snitches out? Why are we getting raided right now? And everybody just looks over at the Asian dude, like you motherfucker, man. Get the fuck out. Get your ass out of here. Yeah, we, we are very, our community is very weak. The black community is very, pretty weak, and we are very weak. Uh, we, you know, we're the, you know, we're the last, uh, you know, uh, the last uh, front in the movement. There is no, there is, there are no Chicano organizations anymore, hardly. Uh, there's a few brown braid chapters out there, but they want to do their own thing. They don't want nobody to tell them what to do. They, they have no sense of, of national direction, national effort. Uh, national campaign. They have no sense of that. They're only thinking about their little community. They don't do anything. They don't do action. They think about what's in front of them at the time. Yeah, a beer. Yeah. No, 100%. That's <laughs> what it is. What is what 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 is in like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is you have to have you know, that's why I said you have to have you know there's there's a, there's a bigger picture here. You have to have some background in 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 uh, in history. Yeah. Some background in being coming a good public speaker. Uh, some some uh, background in, in in organizing and some background in, in being, wanting to help and care about the dying raza, and you know we've been dying out for um, for so many years by you know giving uh, drugs. I mean every day somebody yeah. overdoses, every day a Chicago overdoses in LA County. What's the biggest killer? Drugs. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But also violence too. Yeah. Every day. But what's what's before violence though? Is it be, is there something before violence? It's about the same thing. I would say it's drugs. Drugs. I mean, I don't know the numbers on it, but I would say the drugs because the because the drugs is what starts the violence. Without the drugs, there's less violence. So I put drugs in before the violence. Well, not just not just drugs. So we have okay. Let's say we have okay. Just you know, <clears throat> we have let's say uh, let's say we have one a day. I said, what, how many days in, in a year? 365. Okay, right? 365 uh, on drugs uh, overdoses per year. 365. Chicanos murdered per year, uh, and we have 365 uh, out and out suicides. That's just you being nice about it right now, too. Those numbers are nice, right? Yeah, those are numbers are nice. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean, it's okay. worse than that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's worse than that. Those are in fact those. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but nonetheless, that's why we need to to uh, bring back pride. You know, so people can have pride. So they can stop thinking about just getting higher. Just you know, I, I hate you know, or or or, or, or me or, or, or putting themselves down. That's what that, that leads to suicide. You know, so that's why we say, you know, once again, uh, we have to be proud of ourselves and proud of our community. Hey, check it out, man. I was thinking right now while you're, you know, while you've been talking, and I was thinking that we should, and I can help you do this too. Um, you know, I don't have all the fucking connects. I don't know all the people, but I do know a few. And I was thinking it'd be cool, man, to get you on a tour along with hip hop artists, Along with, uh, you know, uh, art, art events, you know, and and a part of that tour, would you be going and just you know speaking for five, ten minutes to the crowd before the performances, before you know the art, whatever it might be. Yes, it sounds great. Would you be down to do something like that? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think yeah, that'd be good. I mean, did that to put you to get the only way to get your numbers up, and and to create this uh, this unity, this uh, create these uh, 
you know, these these soldiers to come into the Brown Berets, man, is you got to get out there and you got to get on the platforms. And, you know, regardless of the platforms are big or small, you know, as long as they're platforms and you have, you're talking to somebody, you know what I mean? You should, you, you should, that, I think that'd be most definitely a way to get the numbers up. Cause I know it's a number game at the end of the day, everything that's fucking numbers, you know what I mean? You know, and at the same time, you know what I mean? You know, even if you're not recruiting, you're still putting the good word out there, you know, and it just, you may just enlighten one person that night or that day or whatever, you know what I mean? But you're doing your fucking job and shit. You know what I mean, I mean, I don't know if that's your job, but you're doing something, you're talking about something you love and you know, you're speaking, you know, yeah, I think that'd be fun. I think, I think, I think, yeah, I think people have to realize that that we're, you know, we're a rank and file organization. That means what we have, you know, uh, an order like a team. We operate like a like a like a baseball team or like a football team. Hey, would you recruit? Would you recruit? I don't mean to cut you off. Would you recruit uh, guys that are in prison right now? Not in prison. Maybe if they're prison. out of prison. If they're out of prison, yeah. yeah if they sure. if they show that they're they're uh, willing to uh, change, you know, accept uh, social change, accept. Uh, uh, would you call it the problem with a lot of people is they 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 fall they they come out and they fall back to to being uh, to criminal committing criminal crimes. I think if they become dedicated and pure for the community, where well, they're not going to continue with those opinions and wanting to kill people and stuff like that, yeah, if they want to unite the community, yeah, we accept them. What do you think about the homies that uh, that I mean, the only way they're kind of saved is through victory outreach. That's an avenue. I mean, we cannot we cannot put it down. It, it if it helps, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, do you look at them as uh, you know, less of a person? Well, I, I think not that, but I think the the, the brown road is our road. Uh, you have other roads. You know, some people just want to you know wear Indian clothes and 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 and, uh, and do Aztec dancing, which is good. But that's not that's the red road, right? We're the brown road, okay. And then you know. Uh, Christianity, well, that's that's the Christian road, right? Yeah. We're the brown road. You know, so we try to keep up with just stick to the brown road. Oh uh, yeah. Motherfuckers need to get on that brown road, huh? Stop playing. Yeah. Hey, that's dope. I like the way you say that shit, man. Hey, that's fucking the Christian road. This is the brown road right here. Right. You know? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna get something together for you. I'm gonna make some phone calls, man, and uh, you know, and just just get you on some stages, man, and just like Speak your piece, like you know, talk for a good, you know, five minutes. Sounds good. You know, five minutes and and see what it do. You know, you got to get some flyers going. You have flyers? We have a lot of material. Now. You yes. have a lot of material. Okay, yeah, this, uh, I can help you out on that as well too. You know, I have a a, a good friend of mine, family member, uh, Melanie Sarceda. She's out of a uh, um, La Cañada, uh, uh Fuck, what is it? Prince Smith, something like that. I forget the name of it, but anyways, uh, and then I have uh, my boy Larry Cruz. He's a graphic designer, man. I can I can help you guys out with certain things, man. You know what I worry about? You know, I when so so everyone, if, just in case anybody's uh, wondering how we both met, uh, we met through a uh, mutual friend, uh, Rosie. Yeah, Rosie's great. Man. Yeah, Rosie. Rosie's cool as fuck. Um, and so she said she reached out to me. She said, "Hey, Lucky, check it out." Brown Braves, we're trying to recruit, you know, check us out. You know, this, here, this is Dr. Sanch, uh, David Sanchez, blah, 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 you know, spoke, spoke highly of you, real high of you, you know, and, um, you know, and that's when we talked. And then I went to the little meeting you had right there. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to check you guys out. I, I wanted to hear what you were talking about. Cause I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about, uh, you know, I changed my life, man. I used to run the streets with guns and shit and, I was I was I was deep into the game, the gang banging shit, you know. And I did a, I did twelve years in prison, you know. And um, you know, I I I got lucky and I made it out. You know, I mean, I've been blessed and I made it out. You know, I'm 42 years old, you know, and I'm I've been through some fucking rough patches in life, and I wouldn't say everything is peaches and cream right now because I, you know, I still I still I still fight old demons, and I'm still fighting old battles. And I'm always trying to improve myself, you know what I mean? And, and so when uh, Rosie brought that to my attention about the Brown Berets, and I always thought about you guys, and I seen you guys uh, in uh, old pictures that would pop up once in a while. And, and uh, you guys, it seemed like you guys always stood for something, uh, uh, you know, stood for unity, stood for peace. And at the same time, you stood strong, though, you know what I mean, as to be respected as well, you know what I mean? So I kind of like, I like, I like the, uh, the identity, you know, 
of that, you know, so that's what, you know, and then Rosie spoke on it. So I went and checked you guys out. But you know, what always worried me about is uh, I always worry about putting myself in a uh, main concern is putting myself in a predicament, putting a target on my back. And there's easy targets and there's targets that aren't uh, so easy. And I would consider myself an easy target when it came to uh, cops, when it came to someone saying, hey, you know what? Uh, I don't like this dude. I'm going to make something up and put a fucking offense on them. And who the fuck are they going to believe me or or that guy that's got the fucking well, record. Yeah. So I always, I that's that's why I took a step back from it because I don't ever want to put a bigger target on my back than I already have already with my history. You hear what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't worry about something like that. I, I've never had that worry. I've never yeah. had that problem. Now, I'm just, maybe I'm just fucking paranoid. Maybe the drugs fucked me up in my head. And, paranoid. Yeah, maybe I'm, I, you know, and I am to a certain extent, you know what I mean? But, I, you know, some people would call it paranoid and some people would just call it, you know, uh, you know, being uh, aware of the surroundings, being uh, trying to be smarter, uh, maybe trying to play it safe. I mean, I, maybe I've been overly paranoid. You know, what I mean, just because I'm trying to protect what I've worked for to get to this day, which is my fucking hundred uh, percent freedom. Um, uh, you know, I've I, I've had to build myself up all over again. You know, as a, a person that I was then and a person that I am now. I, I some of my homies refer to me as the new lucky. They said, that's the new lucky right there, you know, because I was just fucking, uh, well, uh, I was, just, we got flies in there. Um, I was just knees deep in all the bullshit, you know? So they see me now and they're like, damn, if you know what I mean? You know, I don't know what they say and how they say it, but I, I know they do say that. And, um, but you know, I came, I guess to a point that maybe I am a little too paranoid sometimes, you know, but I, I've just been on, a, I've been on some fucking short end of short, short end of the stick a, a too many, way too many times throughout my life that it, it's made me uh, a little paranoid. And I'm all, and I, I guess to this day with my kids and shit, I'm always trying to play it uh, as safe as possible, even though there has been times that I've crossed that line. Well, the line is, is, is real important. I think, I think you have to remember that as long as you don't break the law, I mean, you can create movement, Okay, organization, protest, demonstration, but as long as you don't break the law, you're okay. But people don't play fair, though. If you're smart enough, you can you 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 know what you're doing. You're not going to get yourself in, in in a bind, and that's that's the way we play. We 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 play a safe organization uh, to make sure that everybody's secure. Even though, for example, over the organization's years, uh, when we had five thousand members, only one brown braid died in, in at one of the demonstrations. Um, and so that's an example. I mean, that was what 30, 40 years, 50 years ago when yeah. Brown Braid died. So that's a pretty good record, you know. Yeah, no, for and sure. So that and not that many Brown Braids went to prison or to jail. So we've been very careful. Uh, and that a lot of that's knowing the law. If you know the law, you will you will you won't be part of, of what they want you to be part of. Yeah. If you know the law, you won't be part of, of, of that that the evidence and all the other stuff that they want you to want to get you with. So, but sometimes I, I get that, you know what I mean? And, uh, but if it's so, if someone is fucking, uh, if someone's ha someone has a tarnished record already, right. You know, uh, they're more, it's true. you know, they're more, uh, you know, can't think of the word right now, man, but, um, you know, they're more, they're more of an easier target. You know what I mean? Regardless of, you know, what they know and, uh, Whatever you know, what I mean, they can. But that's, that's the problem. They 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 want us to all have records. They always want want us all to go to jail so they can keep an eye on us. And we just got to break away from that. And create our own world. Create our own society. Yeah. You know, and create our own protections. Yeah, and that comes and, with numbers. Yeah, that comes with numbers. Got to get these numbers up. Right. Brown berets. Brown Berets, man, if you want to join the Brown Berets, I got the number right here. I'm going to give the number one more time. If you want to join the Brown Berets, call up Rosie at three two three. 849-9122. If you want to join the Brown Berets, if you want to represent your culture, represent your roots, stand for the injustice, stand for what you believe in, you know, um, you need to call this number. It's 323-849-9122. Talk to Rosie. She's going to let you know what to do, you know. So, hey, so check it out, you know. Uh, on another note, you know what I mean? I I was I I I look at you like a rock star, man. You know what I mean, you you had to be living this rock star life for a while. You know, you're always not be. You know, it's not easy. I mean, when you're leading the fucking pack and shit, man, you get the the women got to be flocking to you. 
since back in the day. It's you know what, 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 hey, in regards to in regards to the ladies though, man. What's the difference between them back then and now? There's no difference. No uh, difference. Yeah, no, there's no difference. Still made the same. Just a little plastic involved. If you go, yeah, I mean, I look at pictures. Of, I, I look at pictures of La Raza in Los Angeles in 1920 of women. Yeah, they haven't changed that much. You know, well, none of us have changed that much. Actually, if you go back back to 500 years, back to this, the the uh, advanced civilization in Tenochtitlan, the, the Aztecas. I mean, we haven't changed that much. We're still the same raza. Are you the who? Are are you the Hugh Hefner of the Brown Berets? No, no, you're no. not. You're not walking around with the bunnies. No, <laughs> the brown bunnies. No, <laughs> no I, mean, I, I have a teaching license, and I don't want to lose it. <laughs> yeah, no, I get you, man. I gotta get. I gotta fucking. I gotta give you a hard time, man. I gotta fucking try to get you out your comfort zone a little bit. Oh well, you know the you thing know? is, uh, the thing. I think where you put your priorities at. Uh, it's not, it hasn't been easy. It's been a very long and hard road. Uh, you, you know, you get some people out there that just want to destroy you, and they don't even know you. They don't even know where you're coming from. They don't even know your education. And they just want to destroy you because they're opinionated. By the way, oh, I don't like him. And that's how a lot of Lhasa is. They're like that. Right away, oh, start spreading rumors, you know. Hey, I don't know what it is. It might be the devil in me, man, but I want to ask you all the questions that you probably don't want to answer, but I'll leave it alone. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave it alone, man. I'll keep yeah, this. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there that, are, you know what it is? They're trying to steal the organization from you, and they have stolen it from you a couple no, I of times. You, man. I'm not trying to make you yeah. bad right here. Oh, right? it's, uh, yeah. you know what? It's this, this, this job is, is, I don't get paid. I've never been paid a penny. I mean, you know. Uh, union organizers, they all got paid something. I never got paid a penny, and I'm not expecting to get paid a penny. I do it because I know I can save lives. I know I can save careers, okay? And, for example, the job that we did to stop the violence in the Southwest during the 90s, we saved thousands of lives just by stopping the violence. So that was, every life that gets saved, that's, that's my uh, reward, to save a life. That's my reward. Yeah, that's fucking badass. I like that. Man. We got some more questions right here. Sure. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> David looks the same as he did in the mid-60s. Handsome as ever. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. The Hugh Hefner of Brown Braves? No, no. Oh, I'll leave it alone. Right. No, no, no. I, what, I, what it is, is is I exercise and I eat right and, and I drink water. That's all. I know what to eat. Hey, hey, water and exercise, man. You ain't going to lose with that. You ain't going to lose that. Hey, uh, let me see. What else we got here? Okay. Uh, Highland Park 50. Someone's got to, hey, Highland Park 50, if you're still listening, man. I'm gonna ask you a question right now, but you gotta let me know who Island Park 50 is, because I, I think I know who you are, but I'm not sure. All right, what do the Brown Berets organization practice now? I think you kind of answered that, but well, primarily our our, our main thing is <clears throat> is to uh, one of the re- one of the things that we're doing is we're supporting the idea of, of establishing a Mexican American university. Uh, that's one of the projects that the, just like the Brown Berets had the free clinic. Uh, before that, the Brown Braves had a coffee house. Uh, right now, the Brown Braves are trying to create a university for the, for the community. Uh, and, and being a, a teacher for so many years, I know that we need our own educational institutions in order to become stronger. Uh, the Brown Braves right now, we're, we're, we're working on some police brutality cases, uh, making sure that more police brutality does not happen. Uh, for example, we did we were able to put a lot of pressure on government to the point where the court system, for example, in Los Angeles County, a lot of the courts are being taken over by the state because they realize that the Los Angeles court system is so racist, you know, and and uh, overcharging fines that the state has actually come in to take take away some of the courts away from Los Angeles County. So we always apply those kinds of pressure. The other thing that we do is whenever there's violence in the community, we let people know that they got to stop it, and we go out there into commu- in the community. Uh, so, so those are just some of the projects. Uh, also training, we do a lot of training, uh, leadership training within the Brown Bray organization. And uh, that's also so is important, leadership training. Leadership training, huh? 
And what did that what would that can you know I me mean, do you do you uh teach that class or yeah I teach, that? yeah I teach the class but we all we all teach each other yeah no for sure I mean because everyone might have some insight on you know well you know back in the days when we first back in the days when we first started we actually used to have people marching all the time to teach them uh discipline and to teach them cadence and to teach them uh, uh to, to present themselves and that I think that's one of the things about the, the, the brown braid the brown braid is a psychological ploy to bring attention to the community. Without it, uh, the movement probably couldn't have stopped, started. And so that's why you know, we are out there because we are a psychological ploy, which means you know, uh, we're there to fight for La Raza. Nobody else is out there, we are there. We're the only ones left, there's nobody left. Everything else, is every, all the other groups got wiped out. Mexican yeah. American Political Association, they got wiped out. They all got wiped out. We're the only ones that are left. We're the last trench. Uh, we're the last soldados to, to defend La Raza. Nobody's out there. It just us. Hey, check it out. I got. I just figured out right now. Uh, I just asked right now who was a uh, who was the person commenting right here, and it's actually a good friend of mine, Hector. Uh, I think he'd be a good candidate for the Brown Braves. Good. Yeah, this dude is fucking solid. Great. I mean, he's as solid as he comes. I've known him fucking. I mean, I've known him since I was probably maybe I don't know, seventeen years old maybe. You know, and uh, this dude is solid right here. Um, I mean, I'd love to see this dude get on the Brown Beret uh, movement. Sounds great. And he's a fucking, he's a solid dude. This dude is a solid soldier right here. I don't know, I don't know how, he's asking a lot of fucking uh, badass questions right here. You know, I don't know how interested he is, but yeah. Let's see, we got, uh, we got, uh, have him talk about his book, please. Oh, I had it with me a little while ago. Um, I wrote several books. Uh, when you you know when you're working on your PhD and when you're teaching uh, when you're a college professor, you know you have to write books in order to be uh, known uh, and established uh, in the academic academic world. Uh, and right now, I just wrote a really really nice piece, forty pages, and I'm going to get it out to the community on on, on Chicago intelligence. Anyway, I think uh, the book that, uh, that we're probably talk, thinking about is the Expedition Through Aslan. This was the only book that was written during the Chicano movement. No books were written about the Chicano, Chicano movement from inside the Chicano movement. It's called Expedition Through Aslan. There's, a hundred, there's a 84 pictures in the book. It's a, a history of the, of the Brown Brain movement, but it's also the history of the Chicano movement. And it's, it's you know, somebody said it was the, the Bible of La Raza, you know, because it, it, because it talks about all of these issues. But what it, what it was, was it's called an Expedition Through Aslan because we had a caravana. Uh, the caravana lasted a year and a half. We traveled all over the country. We went to 80 different barrios, all which is Chicago, Texas, uh, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico. We went to all the di 80 different barrios. And we talked, we wrote about what, the, what was going on in those barrios and, what, and how they were related to us and how they were related to our history. And, how, and also the demonstrate. we organized a lot of demonstrations uh, in the Southwest with the caravana. Uh, for example, we were able to go to El Paso and we were able to uh, force the Migra. Uh, we were able to force, in El Paso, we were able to force the Border Patrol to stop shooting people on the border. Because before, it was like a norm to shoot people on the crossing the border into the United States. I mean, it was just natural. They used to do it all the time. We finally got them to stop shooting people crossing the border. And so uh, we did that because we the whole El Paso was in an uprising and we marched our troops into into El Paso at the same time, and we were able to get so, so much news and press and co press coverage, uh, we were actually able to force the director of the Border Patrol to meet with us. And we were able to force him to accept our demands. And one of our demands was to, do, to, uh, to develop psycholog psychological testing uh, for uh, the Border Patrol to stop killing people at the border. Also today, we are also asking that all police departments take psychological tests so they don't use that gun. And so this is very important uh, to get the police and the other people uh, to to meet our demands. Okay, that's solid information right there, man. We got, uh, check it out, we got another question. It says, um, Dr. Sanchez, do you have any YouTube, do you have any YouTube uh, Chicano history videos? If not, why not? Yeah, if not, if not, why not? We um, we have a lot of videos. Uh, quite, we actually we do two videos per year 
uh, on the boundary history and on, and on the history of the Chicano movement. Uh, if you go to, uh, once again, go to our website, which is brownberry.us slash, okay, small letters, all together, no spaces, small letters, brownberry.us slash, and you'll find a page there that tells all where you can find all of our videos. Uh, for example, uh, there's a video, uh, one of the last videos we made was the Chicago, was the uh, March for Justice. It's called the Brown Brain National Party March for Justice for Vanessa Marquez. Yeah, I saw that. I saw you guys uh, saw that all over Facebook. Yeah, so whenever that. whenever we do something significant, we 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 make a video. Uh, for example, we also marched uh, recently uh, against the Academy Awards for not hiring any, you know, and the uh, film industry they're blocking us. Uh, from getting hired, uh, the film industry, uh, a Mexican American Chicano has not gotten a, a, an Emmy Award ever, or a Chicano has never gotten an Academy Award. Ever. I don't know some of that. Yeah, well, they're just keeping us out because you know they're ugly and we're good-looking people, and so <laughs> they they're just keeping us out, yeah, and they're, right. uh, they're, they're not hiring us. I mean, that's the biggest mm -hmm. industry, the biggest industry in Southern California is the entertainment industry, and they're just not hiring us. It's fucking crazy, huh? All over. Yeah. Never discrimination. Fucking discrimination, man. That's fucking prejudice is what it comes down yeah, to. Prejudice. No, There's prejudice definitely. against us. Yeah, most definitely prejudice. What's the age ratio? Brown berets right now. Well, we don't have an age ratio. We accept everybody. Right now, the, the the members right now, what is the what is the average age? Average age is um thirty. Thirty? Yeah. So then what you need is you need some youngsters. That's right. You need youngsters. Because youngsters are, uh, they're tech savvy with this day and age, you know. And uh, nowadays it's all about the content. It's all about the social media platforms. It's all about YouTube. It's all about having that material available for people to find. And the more material there is for people to find, the bigger your movement will be and the, you'll get your numbers up. The less material out there. So if, if the average age is 30, you, you might be you might be being a little nice about that. Well, I think the, the, the thing is, no, we have uh, quite a few young people that are new. But new is, is all I'm saying, though, is yeah. I'm just saying, like, you need, you know. We need that. young people. We, we need, need young, young people. We need young people. The problem that we're facing here in Los Angeles County uh, in Southern California is transportation. Everybody lives so far apart. You know, how can you know somebody lives in Pomona and they gotta go to a meeting all the way in LA? That's an hour drive if you have a car. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, and especially if it's on a weekday and you're fucking you're you're fucked on gridlock and you gotta fight the traffic and it's just, if you have a car. Yeah, if you have a car, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of people don't have cars. So that's about we have to figure that out. But we usually have a a general meeting once a month for all the people who are that far away. Okay. And how many how many people are at that meeting? The general meeting we usually have about twenty five. 25 people. Yeah. And uh, so that's a general meeting, 25 people, which, um, I mean, it's a handful of people. It's a handful of people. Remember, all you need is 12. Why do you only need 12? I don't know. That's just what they say. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you only need two to start a movement. Hey, I mean, where I come from and shit is all you need is one. There you I go. Because there's been times that it just took one solid motherfucker to hold down the whole block. You know what I mean? Right. Until there was other, uh, until there was other soldiers to, uh, to come back and join. You know what I mean? You know. But I, I get it. You know I mean, it, the power of one. The power of one. It can be depending on that individual can be fucking huge. And and I and I, you know, I'd like to say once upon a time ago, I, there's been times that I've been that one person. You know. And uh, not the most positive movement, but um, I, I get the power of one. So uh, 12 is good to me and 25 is good. I'm not knocking the numbers. I'm just, I'm always thinking like, you know what I mean? Let's, uh, 25, shit, let's get 100 there, you know? But um, I mean, I think you're a good leader, man. You're a good talker. Uh, you, you, you like, man, I, like I'm a fucking, like I'm uneducated when it comes to all of this. Why? Because my family is split in two. So and then you know I have a I have a, I ain't got the best fucking family man I, I I hardly have a relationship with my uh with my moms and pops but that's another fucking story but uh I'm just saying though man like you I you know I I'm I'm listening to you and I, I'm listening to you with both ears 
And um, I can see other people, youngsters, uh, or people of my age as well, all ages, people gravitating to you. And I think that you just need to be heard. You need to be heard. You know, I mean, you need to talk more. You need to get out there on those younger platforms. You know, I mean, whatever the fuck it is, like we were talking about, if it's a fucking hip hop, fucking underground show, or if it's whatever, man, we need to uh, we need to get this word out. We need to get you out there. I think you're the key source, man. You 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 you're the source. We need to get you out there, and and let you spread the good word, man. You need to be. You really need to get out there. You know, and oh, yeah. and, and, and 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 I I think it, you get the phone call, you'll show up, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So the thing is, is you need to get those phone calls, right? Because you can't just fucking push your push your way into fucking doors and be like, hold on a second, everybody listen to me. They're gonna be like, who the fuck is this guy? But if you're fucking like a guest speaker, or if you're fucking uh, being escorted onto the fucking stage and shit by some fucking by some uh, you know by some fucking pit bulls and shit, they're gonna be like, hold on, who's this fucking dude right here? You know what I mean? I mean, like sometimes you gotta you gotta give them that fucking shit. You know what I mean. You gotta get, you gotta paint the picture like that. You know, what I mean, to grab people's attention and be like, "Hold on, this dude might have something important to say." You know, and as far as I'm concerned, since you've been, we've been right here for an hour and 50, 50 minutes, almost two hours, and uh, you know, what I mean, you've enlightened us with a lot of information, Doctor Sanchez. I appreciate that, man. Well, it's important to to at this time, it's important to create a movement uh, because if we don't, we're losing we're losing the battle at the job market. We need to fight for those jobs for our community. We're losing the battle at the, the political uh, arena. A lot of these people who are running for office, they're not Chicano advocates. They don't care about us. They just want the job. They just want to get elected and, and collect the check. And so we're, li- we're losing the battle in the political arena. We need to vote all these phonies out and vote our people in. We need to be, get more Chicanos to run for political office. So we've been catching a bunch of L's, huh? They're not they're not advocates of La Raza. They're they they just out you know they just out for themselves. And but when I I mean when I say L's I mean like the La Raza we're catching a lot of L's a lot of losses, you know it's and uh I mean what do you think about the the president uh, President Trump? I mean did you vote for President Trump? Well I think he's I think he's going to be uh, impeached uh, because uh, he made four hundred million dollars last year. See what he did he's got he got he became president so he could make money see so the move make some moves you know move this country that way move against that country move for this country you know hostage here and doing all kinds of movies and now he's got just last year he made 400 million dollars i mean that's a conflict of interest there's definitely something wrong with that so you mean like a uh, 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 tax uh, fraud or, or something he's gonna fucking get hit with or something like you know conflict of interest means that he's not supposed to be make, making money because he's president yeah so you're thinking he's using his power to, he's uh, capitalizing on the on this I mean, using the position to capitalize to get, on that. to get rich get rich I mean shit not mad at him I do the same fucking thing well I mean when you're in a position you you sign a, anytime you're in, in in a political position you sign a paper it's called conflict of interest. That you're not in there to make money for yourself. You're just in there to serve the community. I mean, I, I didn't vote for uh, Donald Trump, but I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. You know what I mean? But I just like, I, I, at this point in the game, it's just, I just kick back and I put the fucking 3D glasses on. I grab some popcorn and I just watch the fucking show because these motherfuckers are going at each other, man. And it's just like a fucking merry-go-round. But it does seem like something's, it, it, I mean, it's, it's shit's been transpiring. Shit's been escalating, you know, like... Ah, is all we can do is just fucking stay tuned, man. We need to fight back because they're 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 channeling our youth to prisons. I mean, right now there's there's a million people in prison in the state of California, and probably the majority, probably the largest majority, is probably Rasa. I know at least two hundred thousand Chicanos are in state in prisons and in jails in the state of California, and that's why they they're, they're channeling us into the prisons. Yeah, and so that that's a problem right there, and uh, you know the other problem is our you know, the, the, our community needs direction. Uh, so many people are just running off, taking drugs, overdosing, and, and overdosing each other. And I can't even tell you all, all the people that have been killed behind drugs and, and it's people stealing drugs from each other. Oh, shit, I know. I yeah, know. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. I mean, like, to this point in day, like, I, I have... Uh, I have several relationships with uh, individuals that I grew up with, and it was all behind drugs and shit. But you know, when you're talking about all these, uh, uh, you know, all the rasa and just the prison population in general, man, the first, you know, what the first thing that comes to my mind what? is, uh, I, I wish I was a fucking. I had shares in Top Ramen, man. 
<laughs> because top ramen noodles, man, they're fucking killing the game. I know, I know. See, but that's the thing. You know, the killing the game. Damn. Yeah. Well, let, me get, let me get two percent shares of that shit. Well, see, man, I, I, and that course, shit and that yeah. shit kills you too. Them fucking little yeah. noodle soups with the packages. Yeah, you know I mean they're fucking. Yeah, it's killing a lot of livers. I, yeah. I, I've had cholesterol yeah, and shit. A friend of not just that. A friend of mine, he he was eating all that 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 prison food, packaged food, and Cheetos and all that stuff that they give you. And uh, he died on a bed. And, and he was in Cochrane, and he died on a bed uh, in in uh, Bakersfield. Chained, he was handcuffed to his bed in the hospital. Yeah. That's how they treat us, you know. Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, you're in prison. You, yeah. you, you get handcuffed to the bed. I mean, we know this you, is your last couple hours, your last couple days, or whatever. But you're still a fucking number, and we got it for our safety. We got to keep you handcuffed to the bed. I get it, man. Yeah, well, that's not just handcuffed to the bed, but we're also handcuffed to our educational system. Yeah, which is not which is not too nice. You know, thousands of Chicano students are pushed out of school, thrown out of school, disrespected, put down. And 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 nothing is being done about it because nothing is being done about it because nobody there's nobody there to do anything about it, you know. There's nobody there to do anything about the the, the prejudice against us in the courts. There's nobody there to do anything about the prejudice against us in the schools, you know. There's nobody there to do anything about the prejudice by the cops against our community. There's nobody there. The only ones that are there are our organization, and we're willing to fight. We'll we'll fight. We're not we're not afraid to fight back. But we need more people to to get on, you know, get on the wagon, get get the spirit going. You know, people at our side, you know, let's do something about it. Let's make our community better. Could you ever handle a presidency? A presidency? Uh, could you ever? Could you? You think you could handle the, being the president of the United States? I could. I mean, you sound like you could. But would, I would you want that position? I would want that position, but I wouldn't want to. Want, I wouldn't want to kill anybody. Because all presidents drop bombs on people. I mean, you got it sometimes. Oh, I don't know about that. What'd you do with North Korea? I wouldn't drop bombs on those people. Well, I mean, would you would you get along with what's his name, Kim, uh, Kim Ju Kim Jong Young or whatever his name is? You know, the uh, North Korean uh, a leader. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What'd yeah. you do? You just fucking crack open, no, crack open some beers and fucking spit yeah, on some fucking Ch Chicano uh, philosophy and shit and there just shit the shit. Yeah. Send him a joint. Have some of your bunnies. <laughs> Set them a joint. Yes. <laughs> I mean, this right here, you know what? I was going to light this up, but my, my boy, I, I forget who it was, but my boy Hector said, bro, don't light that. He told me on the fucking, on the, uh, oh. on the, he goes, bro, don't light that up with him right there. Yeah. And I said, all right, bro, I'm going to respect that. Just because that's a big homie right there. The homie Hector Smiley. Love that dude. But, um, I mean, you know, I just, I'm listening to you talk, man. I'm like, man, I, this dude should be on TV or something. This dude should be fucking spitting this knowledge, spitting this fucking game. You know what I mean? Just fucking, uh, you should be on TV, man. We need to get you. You need to get on more shows like this, but bigger. I mean, one day this is going to grow and this will be a big platform. People will always be able to reflect. You will always be able to share this, uh, this file right here that we're putting into YouTube. This will always be there. And I feel like it's really good content for people to listen to. You know what I mean? And I want to, yeah, you know what I mean? This is, this is going to be a, I think this is going to be one for the history books right here. You know what I mean? In regards to you and where you're going. You know what I mean? I think you're onto another chapter in your life. And I think this is just the beginning right here. Thank Hi. you. Well, the political arena is out there. You know, we need to get Chicago to run for political office. How do you feel about that? You ready? You, you know I mean, you, I, I mean, you, I know you've been doing this, but do you ever look at it as like, you know what? I'm going to get us. This is my second wind. I'm, I'm, this is another chapter. I'm going to fucking, I'm going to make this happen. Do you have goals in the beginning of the year and say, by the end of the year, I'm going to recruit X amount of people. I'm going to make this happen. And bop, bop, bop. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pop it like this. Like what, what goes through your head? Right now we're, we're going through an educational, um, going through an education era. Right now, the Rasa is being educated on Chicano issues. We've, we've just about lost our Chicano identity all over the country. And that's why we have, a, uh, on Facebook, we have a, a page there called uh, Cam uh, National Campaign for Chicano Identity because it's getting lost. It's getting lost in the schools and it's getting lost in the colleges. And that's why we need to bring, bring it back. Yeah, for sure. Hey, check, speaking on that, question right here. I have a daughter who just received her AA and has no clue on Chicano studies. Why is that? Well, I think Chicago Studies has lost its uh, its impact. It, it really does not talk about movement. 
it talks about co cosmopolitan stuff, uh, it, which is the result of the, the professors that they've hired for Chicano studies. Most of them are middle class, upper class people. And because they have the diploma, they're teaching Chicano studies, but they don't know nothing about the barrio. They don't know nothing about the suffering in our community. They don't know about, uh, nothing about all the all the all the rasa that's dying that, that, that uh, when they do not need to die. They don't know, and they don't care. So they end up teaching Chicanos about you know Broadway and cosmopolitan this and cosmopolitan that and 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 all kinds of other issues that are not related to the body or all the kinds of issues that have nothing to do with us. And so Chicano studies has lost lost uh, direction because they're catering they're catering to the white man. Chicago studies they're catering to the university administration. They're scared of the, the administration of the university. They're scared at the, uh, of the administration at the colleges. They're walking on eggshells because the way they treat professors, Chicano professors, they, they treat them like dogs. And, and they lock them in the, in the office and, and all kinds of other stuff goes on. The way they treat our rasa, the way they treat our educators, they treat them really bad at the universities and colleges. And nobody, there's nobody there to say anything. There's nobody, there's no civil rights group. Okay, so Brown Brace, we are the only civil rights group was, for La Raza in was, the country at was, this time. Yeah, that will stand up for situations like that. Yeah. Damn. We need to get these numbers up. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, nowadays you just gotta, man, it's just, it's such a, it's such a sh uh, shallow time. And I mean, the technology is deep, but the mind state is shallow. How many likes can I get? How many comments? You know, how do I look in this picture? Oh, let me put a filter on this. You know, oh, oh hold on. And you know what? I've, I've been a victim to this too at times. I mean, straight up, not a victim, but I've been, a, I'm guilty as it as well at times. I like, oh, check it out. I'm going to, I'm going to make this video right now of me giving uh, this homeless man some money mm -hmm. to make myself look good. You know, I'm, I've been guilty of that, you know, and that's, that's just uh, the shallowness on my behalf, you know what I mean? You know, and I, I've been a shallow person a lot of years in life on different levels, you know, and I've, and I've tried to be deep in certain things, but you know what I mean? I'm always working on myself, but when I'm talking shit, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here in a glass house, so I'm far from fucking perfect, but damn, you know what I mean? I'm just thinking like, you know, how to get through these kids and and make it appealing to be uh, educated on this, be fucking smart, stand up for this. Like, well, how do you put it in style for them? You know what I mean? It's gotta be in style. How do we make this in style? And you gotta, we gotta, uh, you gotta recruit some, uh, some high level uh, uh, artist, uh, if it's a musician or whoever it is, you know what I mean? With a, uh, with a, a influence on the on the on the public and got the numbers already on whatever they're doing and then they put this on them and i think that will help recruit members you know what i mean but if not you gotta fucking you gotta get out there and you gotta grind that shit out and that's you because you have the fucking mind full of all this information you know what i mean like and i mean like is there other uh, other guys in your organization or women that have this uh plethora of information in their head that's yes, the word we, plethora, right? No, we, have, we have several good people. Uh, they, they can they can yes, sit here and yes. drop as much history, knowledge, and education as you. Maybe not as much, but they're, they they're pretty good. We got some pretty good pretty good leaders. We have uh, I think three good female leaders, uh, and we have also have uh, we have a, a a few people who are very trained. We have some new students who are very very qualified in, in talking about history. Uh, so we do have. Uh, uh, an organization of leaders, and that's what we need. We need more leaders, people who can reach down into the heart and understand that one action that they do could save a life, and that's what's important. Hey, well, on that note right there, let's go ahead and end it right there, huh? Hey, uh, real quick, real quick, um, Jennifer Jackson said, uh, Lucky, can you tell Dr. Sanchez it has been an honor listening to his wisdom and struggles? Thank you very much. And and that goes on my behalf as well, too, man. This has been fucking awesome. Thank you, hey, Lucky. Hey, I appreciate you, brother. Big brother. And, Big brother, uh, that's up. Yeah, yes, sir. Hey, Brown Berets, you want to join? I'm going to give you a number right now. The number is 323-849. Excuse me. 9122. Once again, that's 323-849-9122. Uh, 
Dr. David Sanchez, founder of the Brown Berets, still marching forward, still educating, still enlightening us with that knowledge. This boy's got years of fucking knowledge. Follow the boy. Appreciate you, brother. There we go, big dumb. That's a wrap.